Discord Need channel right after this. Hey, right. everybody, how are we doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I completely <laughs> messed this up. Wow, talk uh, about impromptu. Yeah, I'm such a. I grew up as a police officer. So I understand. I'm still learning the YouTube shit too, Poe. Oh my goodness! It's all good, bro. So everyone, everyone in the chat. So you just missed it. We just did the whole intro with the like <laughs> intro screen, and we like it did beautiful. it, and then we realized that um somebody forgot to hit the go live button. <laughs> I hit the one and forgot you had to hit it. Hit the second one. So that's that's on me. And Should Chad was again? full screen. Yeah, let's let's show him what it was going to look let's like. Let's do it again. <laughs> but the backstage footage was way better. <laughs> Hey everyone. Hi everyone. This is Clearwater Chad reporting from Clearwater, Florida. 81 degrees in Clearwater. Hold the sign up, kids. 81 degrees in Clearwater, Florida. Back to you, Poe. All right. So there it is. Now you see how it was. So. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Still a little rough, it? Chad, but we'll work on it. Man. I know it is. You yeah. Throwing... You know, I. Hey, you I, got a lot I, of pressure on you. Got thrown. I thrown prepped in there. all day and I still couldn't get it right. <laughs> we have the most fun during these mess ups, anyway. So <laughs> I prepped all my paint and everything. Oh man! Next time, guys. Next time. Yep. Next Sunday. So we're gonna. We got uh, tonight's a really unique one because we have everyone is streaming through their channels, not just through mine. So this is a first for us. So yeah, I messed it up. I got no problem admitting it. Um, <clears throat> so please welcome. Clearwater Chad, Apostate Alex, Doug Kramer, the four hello, horse. Hello, hello. Um, thanks for having me, Poe. I, I guess I'll jump in and say hello to everyone that's watching on my channel. And um, if you are watching on my channel, go and subscribe to everyone else. Um, there should be links in the description. But last time, actually, the links didn't work for some reason. So um, all of you know, just search our names. But go follow John Poe. He's awesome um, if you're watching on my channel. And... Okay, what a chat and Doug as well. So oh, yeah, exactly. And everyone on my channel, please make sure you're doing the same. These are all great guys, and uh, I, these live streams are some of the most fun we have. So the mess ups and all, it's just good time. Doug, <laughs> yes, I concur with everything you just said. <laughs> and Chad, Chad agrees. Uh, Alex' response was beautiful to that. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got uh, got quite a few things going on tonight, a lot to talk about, and this is pretty awesome. I love doing these kinds of live streams where we can all get together, and uh, we we mostly free we wing it through the through the live stream, but uh, we got a few hit points because there's a lot of news coming out of uh, Scientology in this last week or two. Yes. Um, let's start By the off way, with... Poe, real quick, I'm sorry it's... to interrupt, but just to cover Daniel's question real quick, because it might be confusing. He wants to know where are we all supposed to go then since we're, you know, going on four channels. If you could, if you don't mind beaming it on two of your televisions and, um, booting up two phones to run the chat, <laughs> that would be the optimum <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> go ahead and stay on the channel that you're are already subscribed to. It's streaming through all four of them right now. So. If you want to do chats, you can't do it on my channel since it's not monetized. So if you want to do the super chats, go on any of the other channels. And also maybe you could just bounce around whatever you feel like doing. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. And all of it is appreciated, folks. Uh, let's see. Um, first up, we've got the Danny Masterson trial. So I want to hear uh, your guys' thoughts and comments on what's going on with this and the news that's coming out about that. So uh, whoever wants to jump in first. Take it away, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> i don't i I'll, i can say something but um you go you, you, you go first Doug. i want to hear your opening statement though and i can riff off that <laughs> <laughs> um present your case and i'll jump in and uh as defense i i am by no means an expert in this particular um case obviously i followed it quite closely last time um but i am a bit behind on this one um but i think it's um interesting all my main point is that i think uh, i have a lot of respect for judge olmedo because she clearly is now for sure 
aware of the sort of tricks and games of Scientology like to play, and yeah. she is not having it. And for for me, that I think that's a really positive sign um, that it's going in the right direction in terms of her understanding because Scientology like to drag legal cases out for as long as possible and mm-hmm. add as many barriers and bars and stuff as possible and just little things like I don't know if you guys are aware but um, Scientology requested to um, ask like they requested more time um, and for the trial to be delayed um, and she gave them six days rather than the six months or whatever that she was requesting and as much as um, I'm not accusing because you know this is just you know suggestion or whatever but you know if Scientology were to try and infiltrate the jury somehow right and try and get someone or infiltrate someone on the in the jury pool to be on you know to be on their side effectively on Danny Masterson's side um that would be a lot easier to do if you have six months notice but the fact that she um only postponed it six days um that makes it a lot harder because the jury pool has kind of already been selected so there's no way that Scientology can try and get someone to be selected if that makes sense and just little right. like that that she's taking action to prevent any sort of malpractice or um, meddling in the the case as much as possible um and she has been quite firm with them and she's saying you know no i don't have time for this just answer the question like come on just stop messing around yeah. which i think is good because we do see a lot of um not necessarily law enforcement but the judicial system if people aren't educated in scientology in the u.s they do tend to fall for some of their um some of scientology's tactics because they work within the legal framework um to try and delay things as long as possible so if you don't know that that's what scientology do then it is quite easy to fall for it and we do see it time and time again and i think judge almeida is being really fair and you know being quite firm um which i think is a positive thing Excellent. Excellent. Doug. I was just wondering real quick, Chad, as an outsider, a non-Scientologist, um, what, what's your, have you been following it? And if so, what's kind of your take as an outsider? Cause we might be too close to it as ex-Scientologists. Well, well, he's Osa. Well, we know that, but I'm just well, as... pretending like he's not. <laughs> just give us the non osa answer. We know who you are. You dirty rat. As we know, we, as we know, Danny's innocent of everything. I don't believe the allegations. You don't believe it. I don't see it. You don't see it. Be a he at me a deer. <laughs> wow. Is that an LRH quote? I got to write yep. that one down. <laughs> well, he sits there painting marijuana leaves. Oh, yep, that's, that's right. not a marijuana leaf. Is that inspired from yesterday's <laughs> stream, Chad? <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. Uh, I think that um, I've been noticing a lot of trends with the uh, with the judges in a lot of these Scientology cases where they're going really light on a lot of things. And we're seeing that Judge Almeida is really hammering down on it she's not playing any game she's not going to get fooled with and i know personally from knowing a lot of judges in big cases like this if you're a district uh district judge or a magistrate a lot of them will make a lighter decision and let the appellate courts make the final decisions on these things instead of letting themselves get roasted so it's not unusual that they're going to be playing out on the safe side with that. But I'm glad to see that she's taking a firm stand on this and she's not letting them play any games with it. So Can it's I ask... almost reminiscent of like Thank the you, UK Greta. because um Scientology in the UK have been through their legal turmoil previously and from the evidence that I've seen um in cases, the UK just don't they just like they're just no, like they're not taking right. any of it. And it's I think it's built Excellent. into our system a little bit more, which is a good thing. But I think I'm starting to see a similar sort of conversations and words and things being said in the court in the US about Scientology that we hear over here. So it is promising. Sorry, Doug, I cut your con. That's okay, man. Yeah, I don't really feel that way. I think he's going to get off, unfortunately. I hope that I'm wrong, but I don't have a lot of faith in the legal system anyways, let alone what we saw um, Scientology just do in the last one. And the main issue, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that the gals had a big part of it. We could only ascertain a little bit from you know what might have happened in the first trial because it never came out as to why he was quote-unquote let off. But it seemed like it was the fact that the jury couldn't understand and the girls weren't to be totally believed because of the length of time that it took. Right. And then also one of the gals went back to Danny after being essayed. So that unless you understand an abusive relationship and the workings and gaslightings and all sorts of inner workings of Scientology, 
I would question rather the jury 12 random people without psychology backgrounds and not knowing much about Scientology and one of them being a fan of Masterson uh, and just watching how they've just for years how Scientology dances around the justice system and it's actually in the policies of Hubbard. I don't have a lot of faith um, at all, but I hope I'm wrong. I just wonder from you guys what you think is going to be significantly different this time around where he might be served justice. <laughs> I think that's where that comes in, what I was just saying. By saying that I see Judge Olmedo being quite fair and um, kind of rule, not ruling with an iron fist, but like putting her foot down, I suppose, that doesn't mean that I believe that the case will go either way. I think this is just an indicator that's a positive thing, right? I, I do think it is going to be an interesting trial to watch for sure. And um, I I believe in the victims and the stories and I totally am on um, the victim side. And um, as much as I would love the case to end in their favour, um, you know, you never know. And right. it is hard because Scientology and Danny Masterson will be fighting this tooth and nail with a ridiculous amount of budget. And the way they like to operate is find little legal loopholes wherever they can to try and um, to try and get get him off the hook. But I think the ma one of the major differences is, yes, Judge, like I said, Judge Almeida's sort of attitude. But also things like bringing in Claire Headley as a witness, right? And they are now, before, couldn't really talk about Scientology. Whereas this time, the fact that they are allowing some Scientology testimony, um, I believe is a positive thing because that means that they are bringing that into it more, which means they have an understanding they didn't have last time that Scientology did play more of a role in this than you think. And I think that's only a positive thing because I can totally, as a former Scientologist, see how this is a big problem for them because they may not be guilty themselves of actually doing the alleged crime they are intimately involved in terms of the mindset that someone can be in in which and and the environment in which this sort of thing can take place um and the fact that they are bringing in claire headley and, and people like that to testify on scientology policy i think is a big thing and i think it's going to be really interesting to see what scientology do in response because they're trying to kind of publicly keep their hands off the case and there's nothing to do with us at all um but i i'm almost 100 percent certain that the moment the case is over regardless of the outcome they will do some sort of public statement if danny masterson is convicted i think scientology will instantly be like well you know he he's a suppressive person nothing to do with this we kicked him out blah blah, blah. not necessarily or because or a lot of the other way go around with, go with him if that happens yeah that's what i mean all the other way around and back him up and you know it'll be interesting to see but mm -hmm. but i think scientology being brought into it this time which they weren't before is going to be a major game changer no they were before but i think what you're saying is they're being brought in more this time do you know how much because this has always been the thing right they don't they only want to let scientology in enough if it appertains to the case but it scientology is not on trial do you know alex if they're being let more leeway this time around on with claire and everything being able to actually bring scientology into it not to prosecute him but to provide background as to why they took so long etc it is it being allowed more do you, do you know my, my understanding on it before was scientology is only allowed to be discussed if it is necessary as part of explaining right. something like a knowledge yeah. report or something they had to explain what that was but there was no scientology testimony there was no um evidence of the scientology mindset and what it does and what is right. and isn't church policy and there was no what scientology policy is wasn't put on trial right because scientology isn't a defendant they're not involved but it's a big part of it whereas this time they are bringing in expert witnesses like claire headley to mm -hmm. to kind of give testimony on what scientology policy and practice is and that in itself will give context to the jurors that they didn't have last time because judge Olmedo is allowing people to like scientology to be brought in as a major context thing which wasn't allowed Excellent. before and she's got a lot of courage for doing that, by the way, especially going up against her stepfather. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that that's that's a big point. And that was actually the next point we were going to head into is the fact that Claire Headley, if I remember correctly, she's only the second person ever been allowed to be an expert in a uh, any kind of court proceeding when it comes to Scientology. And that really points out where they're going to go with a lot of this stuff. You have the fact of the um fair gaming that's being reported haven't been going on long after these uh victims had been out of the church and now they're being followed they're being harassed tormented 
And I think that having Claire in there really is going to open up a lot of things in this case. That's going to, that's never been presented before. And, uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a pretty important fact on it. Um, yeah, definitely. And I'm glad to see that the judge actually allowed it. Um, I wonder what Scientology would do in something like this. It was just in the back of my mind, like, is Claire taking precautions, you know, or are they going to fair game her? They definitely wouldn't want her to testify, I'd imagine. So hopefully she's, I'm sure she's safe, but I do wonder what Scientology may or may not do to well, rattle remember, her or something. They just had the, uh, the, the letters or emails, I can't remember which it was, that were sent out to Mark and Claire's clients. Right. So I, mean, I that think was probably prepped been, for. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, we'll go into the other the other topic in a second here. Colonel Brock wants to know if any of uh, any of us have ever served on a jury or testified in court. Um, well, I can tell you, I've, I've testified in court more times than I could ever count. Um, you know, and you you start off, you know, testifying as a police officer, you start off like anything else you start off very nervous not knowing what's going to happen how the court works and everything i mean you go Mm -hmm. through the training but once you're there on the witness stand and you're going through the actual trial it's a lot different than what you see in a in a uh, classroom but uh you start getting into your own rhythm and the way that you handle things and the biggest point of it i for me was always to remember that nothing is personal um Attorneys are going to do their best to try to make you look like you're an idiot. They're Mm -hmm. going to try to make it look like you're wrong and that their client was a victim. Mm -hmm. And you just, you can't take any of it personal. And that's where a lot of people get, get uh, tripped up in court cases as they, they start getting angry because they think the attorneys are just going overboard and it's, it's hurting them. So yeah, don't, you know, you've had to testify a lot, right, pal? Oh, you have no idea. I, um, you remember the guy who, uh, the doctor here in Michigan, who was helping with the uh, killing people? Suicide? Yeah, Doctor Kavinsky Kavorkian. There you go. Yeah, um, I actually had to testify in front of his attorney. Had really? me on the uh, on the stand for about four hours. Really? Yeah, I finally stopped when I I looked at the judge and I said, "I'm sorry, but I need to go to the bathroom if I could, please." But uh, yeah, you know, he did everything he could. Um, AB, uh, 30 years behind the badge, the law enforcement. Wow. Chief Thank you for your service, sir. And I'm uh, glad you're alive to share the story. Cause then we've talked before and you've been, oh, you've yeah. had some adventures. Let's see. I'm checking all these, uh, comments, make sure we're not missing any questions here. The most important Check one them twice, po. real, real quick, Poe, the most important one is from Greta. Uh, hi, Chad. Could you paint a bobblehead, uh, and a palm tree also? Hi. Well, I just did the yeah. palm tree. I could do a bubble okay, head. Throw the, okay, let's um, throw them. Honored throw them. and privileged if someone requested something from Chad. <laughs> right? Let's not let it go to your head. 10x. <laughs> I'm really, down. 10x. <laughs> so. I'll do the bobblehead. Yeah, let's get cool, that bobblehead going, it. brother. Yep. All request. right. You've got requests. And Greta, right. thank you very much for that super chat. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Yep, we're good on on the topics. Leading in, leading in from that last one, we've got the uh, problems with the PIs and the fair gaming that appears to still be going on. Um, Aaron Smith Levin just recently uh, confronted one of the PIs, and I know I've seen that face around before. Yeah, that guy um, looked like a total douchebag. By the way, they have to hire these C level like villain looking people with broke down trucks, and I mean that guy yeah. just looked what? like a joke. I know this is a, a silly little point, but why is it I have noticed that all the PIs that follow Scientology in They're the US weird, dude. seem to have exactly the same white car? <laughs> like I, thought that was a red, I thought that was a red car. Wait, okay, other that than that one, right, okay. most, the... I would say 80 or 90% of the videos of PIs that follow Scientology, they're always in the same, like, white either a pickup truck or car right. uh, like, truck, yeah. <laughs> well, I just they do funny. have funny yeah i've you never know, seen having, them follow had my my pi's license here in michigan um you, when you start going into the training and looking into the actual work of being a pi that's one of the big things is try to get the most inconspicuous vehicles possible so that's the kind of things that they're going to do with it um uh, let's that makes see sense. annie that makes sense. if scientology start fair gaming any involved with the case wouldn't that then allow the judge to open it up regarding cos that's a good question. that makes sense i understand mm-hmm. what you're asking thank you for the super chat i think that's Excellent. a that is a valid point i think 
that's not going to stop them. And you also have to remember that the Scientology know the law and they like to operate on that gray area on the boundary. So they will, it won't stop them, but they will push it as far as they can so that they're not actually doing anything illegal. It's not illegal to hire a private investigator to follow someone. It's not illegal to do a lot of the things that they do. But when you pile it together into sort of a harassment type thing, then you can present it as a harassment case they did that here in the uk and they lost they were um they had to settle out of court for um harassing bonnie woods um or no they didn't settle out of court i think they lost the case um but regardless right they it's interesting because scientology aren't on trial so right. it's not going to be doing them any favors if they are seen to be harassing claire and, and aaron and all of that um but it's not going to stop them because if claire brings it up and says for example they're harassing me right now and they're following me pis etc and that's just what they do you know masterson's response is just going to be like well that's scientology that's not nothing to do with me and if scientology do respond it'll be like well you know she's just a an apostate that's got a grudge against us and she's making it all up um so it, it it is interesting for sure like they they it won't do them any favors for sure um but it won't stop them because they're not they always tread that line very carefully well here's where it work, works a little bit differently is when you take someone who's going to be an active witness in a case and you start going after them that way it's actually witness intimidation which is a pretty good felony in most states i know it is here in michigan and it's specifically made so such a high case because of the fact that if you don't bring the hammer down on people doing this then what's going to happen is everybody else in the, the out there is going to start using the same kind of tactics so they make it a very hard one to uh to work your way out of and chad is just driving me crazy <laughs> but <laughs> goldie's like what <laughs> is chad doing up there? hey it was a request i can't i was I gonna know. say what the hell he's just doing his job. but he uh, looks but... like mr blobby do you guys know what who mr blobby is it's a mm -hmm. uk right in sorry slight tangent um if the viewer <laughs> wants it then it's gotta happen Mr. Bobby is this um this kind of creepy um children's TV character from like the 80s and 90s in the UK, and this is what <laughs> clear what a Chad is drawing right now. I'll show also, you. I'm no art critic, but I'm not seeing the resemblance to the bobblehead. <laughs> Look, I just well, shared well, my screen. Well, if you want to accept it, Poe, this is <laughs> this is Mr. Bobby, and it looks just like what clear what a Chad is painting right now. Okay, Let's see it, here. man. <laughs> oh my gosh no, it does it does dude oh that's traumatizing is a, it is it looks like something that pedo would be into if anyone Doesn't wants it? to buy it we'll send uh chad maybe you should go ahead and stop with that artwork i think it's too <laughs> triggering for the audience all right well it was you have to put that up alex look at that thing i'm gonna that's gonna give me freaking nightmares man this is like oh yeah it, it, doug if you if that's doug terrifying. you and poe particularly if you the grow up in the uk this is what you would have watched on children's tv really and, yeah. no shit no yeah. wonder you guys are no just kidding <laughs> No okay, one I gotta one. get it off there. What that's, were those that's, things? No shit. That's those things really that had cool. like the TVs in their belly and stuff like that. The children's teddy tubbies. Oh, oh okay. right. Yeah. Ooh, they hated. That oh, I used to too. love the teddy tubbies. But um, yeah, the the thing with this is where this can really go go south on Scientology in a quick way is if they catch the PIs in the act of witness intimidation. And those PIs turn over, roll over and start giving out the information about why they're doing it, who's paying them and all that. That's where it's going to start building a case against Scientology on that. So, yeah, it's that can really turn out bad for them. This is another thing you have to remember. Scientology never employ private investigators. They will employ a law firm who will then employ a PI team. So, yes, they're indirectly working for oh, yeah. the Church of Scientology. Um, they protect themselves in that way um, so that it's a bit harder to prove that they're the ones actually doing it. Um, right. Look, it could go to one of two ways. They could just keep doing it and then you know so, like Scientology aren't on trial so yeah it doesn't help but they're not the, they're not going to have the op opportunity to defend themselves or whatever um so it could go one of two ways either it will go into that and witness tampering and you know harassment and stuff like you said um right. or they will just stop and they'll pause or do it very lightly so that they don't risk it and then as soon as um Claire is finished with her testimony they'll crap back on oh, it, yeah. it, it, you know I wouldn't be surprised if they just pause everything for now um, so that they don't jeopardize the case. 
it's uh and yeah i mean it's the it, there's so many different ways it can go it's it, but the big thing is is that these these private investigators they you know a lot of time they walk around like they have some kind of immunity and well i'm a private investigator this is part of my job you don't mm -hmm. like it too bad well this is the kind of thing get them really caught up in it uh let's see here would any kind of tampering potentially lead to jury being sequestered I don't, I would say that the jury is going to be sequestered anyway. Um, most big televised trials like this, it's not, they televised. Should be, it's not, well, I mean, it's being heavily reported. They should be, they should be sequestered to, uh, to begin with because they don't want the interference from the outside going into it. Um, let's see here. Barb, thank you for the super chat. Uh, in other news, someone is getting their SPTV tattoo no film at 11. Was that, is, is that it you, Barb? Barb? So I heard, I remember seeing, I think it was on one of Aaron's um, Someone's gonna get a tattoo. live streams. Let's see. Lily Rose. It's great to hear from a law enforcement officer explaining why it is lawful and unlawful when it comes to, okay. Yeah. And that's, you know, I'm not, I'm not an attorney. I don't, I'm not given any legal advice, but the big thing here is, is that, you know, I know the law in my state and how things uh, pertain to the actual criminal proceedings. And I'm just giving you my perspective on things of how they go. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's crazy stuff. Goldie needs a new computer for her to do four video. Yeah. Goldie, are you doing four live streams at once? If you are darling. Um, I, I wonder I if we should, I wonder if we should bring her in to StreamYard. I don't know if there's an option to moderate. If you she know, maybe wants something to, to look into, I would but love for like if, right if now, it's... Alex. For her no, to come not now. necessarily on camera, but I mean, like you know, right. for next time, look into it because if she love can that. moderate, if we can bring her into StreamYard as like a guest that's not on the picture, yeah. but right. like can see all of the chat and moderate from one place, that might make it easier for her. I don't know if it's possible. Um, we'll but look I'll, I'll look it. into it because Goldie, if 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 you can moderate all of the chats from one place, that might be easier. It might be possible. And especially we've got a 159 in in uh, viewing right now. So, nice, you know. And I know that she's got the other channels going as well. So she's got to be staying pretty busy with this stuff. Uh, Thanks for everything you do, Goldie. It's not said often yep. enough because I get wrapped up in the lies. But man, I don't know how you do what you do, and without you, three. it would be it wouldn't it would just it would be impossible actually wow and really? folks make sure you show show some love to goldie out there she is amazing and really? i i i could tell you honestly i i wouldn't have been able to to get going very well with this stuff if i didn't have goldie out there me too me, me too so, uh, goldie's she, awesome she's and, and her name's perfect she is golden so she's got the mod right. with the heart with the heart in it we're going like to get on to alex's favorite topic grant cardone and his <laughs> brother being sued over what's going on mm. so alex if you'd like to lead the way on that one um where do i start i think look i never really felt any particular way about grant cardone until um i did this live with aaron smith levin on growing up in scientology because it forced me to do a bit of research and i delved into grant cardone's claims about marketing and digital marketing and what he does an interesting video go and watch it if you haven't already because i work in the marketing job like professionally so i know a lot about that industry and a lot of what grant cardone says is just complete rubbish and he doesn't really know what he's talking about um and he lies and he exaggerates and all and then suddenly once i found that out then i suddenly became really interested um and just find the whole thing really funny um but yeah, you know, his brother, for those of you who don't know, runs a company or was involved in a company. He runs a company, right? That's 911 chargebacks or something. Is that what it's called? That's um, 911. One, yeah, chargeback 911. Chargeback 911. Yeah, which is, you know, on there's a case built against them for fraud and things like this. And um, it's very clear that. Um, they have a solid case. Um, Jeffrey Augustine did a live stream with Aaron yesterday, I think it was, where he kind of dissected the case that has been put against Chargeback 911 that's run by Grant Cohen's brother. Um, and like he was saying, and I agree, like they've got a solid case. They have presented a real evidence of their sort of malpractice. An example um, they gave was... Um, 
there was a screen like someone would request the money back and say you know this has been incorrectly charged i want a refund um and their case they would send a screenshot and say no look this is the page that they signed up on and it clearly states that they've accepted it and therefore they can't claim the money back and actually the screenshot that they sent was a different company different product name um, and they are actively supplying um you know fraudulent claims right fraud, fraud they're, they're committing fraud in terms of the evidence they're supplying to this committee thing so um i think it's really interesting and um they have a solid case so it'll be interesting to see if or how he gets out of it well if uh, for the folks who don't know what what's going on with the chargeback stuff when if you've ever tried to order like vitamins or dietary supplements those kinds of things um mostly you see them online or people will call in, you give them your credit card number. Yeah, I just want to do the trial, the one bottle for $2 or whatever. And then suddenly you're locked into this purchase that every month they're charging you, they're sending your product out, and it's almost impossible to get out of them. What happens is a lot of folks deny the charges, and then they go to their bank or their financial institution where the card is from. That's called a chargeback. And so if you get so many chargebacks on your account as a merchant, they close your merchant's account. So my understanding is with chargeback 911, what it is that they're doing is they're teaching these companies how to flood their merchant accounts so that they don't get over the percentage to where their merchant account gets shut down. I, th I think it's like I think it's a, it's a minutia point, but I don't think they're teaching companies. I think they're doing it on behalf of the companies. Neither, I okay. think the merchant hired them to deal with all of their cases of this. I, th oh, I believe wow. that's how they operate. So therefore, yeah. the merchants who are using them are potentially not to blame because as far as i understand it that's the point of the case is their nine what charge back 911 are claiming well no we just provide the service and we train them and the merchants are the ones that go mm. and do it you know it's not our fault if they are doing it fraudulently right. um whereas actually they're the ones I don't know if they're actually doing it, but they're heavily involved in. So that's the case. I think the case evolves around whether they are actually guilty of committing this fraud or whether they are going to put it onto their merchants and say, no, look, we just provide okay. the service. How they use it is not our problem. Right. And, you know, me personally, when I see now are Grant and his brother, are they twins? Is that what I what I heard? OK, yep. when, when I see him, the way he acts and dresses and all that reminds me of a 1990s kind of hedge fund guy. Totally. Tom Boo. At a Tom Wall Street. <laughs> Tom he's, a, he's like a 90s caricature in like one of those Wall Street movies with Michael Douglas. He's just the yeah. throwback to. Yeah. And he what he's doing is a complete fraud. I knew years ago that guy was going to get caught eventually. A lot of Scientologists, by the way, run a similar business model where it's like a pyramid scam. Uh, that's not exactly what Grant's doing, but be, well, because that's what Scientology is. So many people, I'm thinking of Reed Slotkin. He was one of the most famous mm -hmm. ones for running pyramid scans, but many, many Scientologists have gone down the same way Grant's going to. So this is nothing right. new. This is what they who, do. Who was, uh, okay. I, I saw uh, someone posted on Facebook. Grant Cardone had posted something about, you may not like me, but you know me. And you know I'm successful, and someone yeah. someone posted, yeah, we all know who Bernie Madoff is, also, but that doesn't I mean saw that. Yeah, well, he's a narcissist, so he <laughs> loves the attention, good or bad. And, and you know, I yeah, I just I see him, and I'm just like, how much lotion are you going to put on? How much? Know, that's such an on? absolute tool and douchebag. Uh, Ted S. With Claire being an expert witness, and she will be on the record. Have any other expert given on the record testimony that could be used in other court cases as a fact? Um. I believe she's the second, as far as I know, second person ever who has been allowed to present as a uh, expert witness on Scientology. And quite honestly, unless you're talking Mike Render or, or someone in that league, I don't think there's too many other people who could really be considered as much of an expert as Claire is. Um, the only thing I see where there'd be a problem is, is that Claire is a she's a couple decades out of Scientology now, isn't she? So they can try to say that what she's saying is old stuff that's already been changed. But other than that's that, a I good don't point. Think a real good I think, guy. I think that that is totally true. Um, and look, it's, it's an interesting one because 
Scientology policy is Scientology policy. It's, it's actually a policy that says you can't change Elrond Hubbard's words. It is a, 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 high, a high crime. You cannot change it or alter the tech. So it's never going to change. It's always going to be oh. the way that it is. So in a way, anybody who has studied Scientology is technically an expert because there isn't room for interpretation or anything of the of the policies. Um, but Claire is an excellent example of someone that she worked <clears throat> in RTC, which is the very highest upper echelons mm -hmm. of Scientology. She is a very high level former Scientologist that really knows her shit, but also has personal um, experience of, and this is the key point, not just what the policy is, how it is actually applied in real life and what that looks right. like. And I think that's the key thing here because you can get caught up in what the policy says and what it means and all of this, but the key thing here is showing the real life application of it. And in a sense, it doesn't matter how long she's been out because um, she was very high level she knows what the policy is and she was victim to some of it she has personal accounts and experience of a lot of the ways that they do things um and policy doesn't change so even though she's been out for a long time um it, she's still an expert on the subject and especially yeah. considering she is now part of the aftermath foundation she has real first-hand accounts of what is going on now with people leaving right. scientology right now um so she's a perfect candidate to give testimony on not just the policy but actually the reality of how did how it's implemented and its effects um so i think i think she's a great person to have and i'm really excited and looking forward to seeing what she's got to say because they couldn't have picked anyone better i i'd forgotten all about the fact that l ron had put it into his uh into his actual memoir uh, rules or whatever they call it the tech uh, that it can't be changed so that's an excellent point there but um, one point on that just real quick because it sparked off as they have david miscavish has changed so much i'm surprised that more scientologists haven't left for example they removed the saint hill special briefing course here's where you get into gibberish town but real simply that was the biggest course in scientology or one of the biggest in fact the l ron hubbard way where they had the advanced organization and something called pack base all on one street wow. they had a whole huge building dedicated to the St. Hill special briefing course. And David Miscavige got rid of that. He got rid of all the red volumes. This is big stuff. Poe is what I'm saying in Scientology. Mm -hmm. And then he also repackaged uh, the lectures and the books claiming that they missed semicolons. He blamed it on the printer, all right. sorts of scams. And then they took, I learned from, from um, Catherine Olson with the interview with Alex when we were all talking that they don't put the um the famous gay one one thing in the oh. science of survival book i mean so david has changed so much in key choruses right. and yet it hasn't caused you're not supposed to change a damn thing i mean I it, it did, would be, it, a, sorry, I think it'd be a great point if claire brought that up in the in the court case talking about the fact that the man who wrote the manifesto for Scientology says it's not to be changed and how much it is being changed. I think that would be something really interesting that got to other Scientologists that are out there. I so. think in, in the nineties, there was this big thing called the golden age of tech. And that was, this was the first kind of big evolution where Dave Miscavige changed everything. And um, a lot of Scientologists did leave. It was a huge moment in Scientology's history. Um, and effectively, Dave Miscavige changed a lot, but he did it under the guise of he's uncovered evidence and he's now actually making it really like what Owen Hubbard said, like there were misinterpretations or mistypings and he's edited it and made changes because actually he's getting it back to the true words of Owen Hubbard. That's the excuse mm. that he gave. Okay. Um but that was the start of a very long process of him changing things, absolutely. Um, and it did, it was in the 90s, it caused a huge load of people to leave because they effectively said, um, everything you've done so far was done incorrectly and you need to go and do it again um, at your expense. So a lot of people who are clear or OT5 or OT7 or 8 or whatever were told you have to go back and do it all again. The student hat, which is one of the first courses that you do in Scientology, is like, yeah, no, you've... That wasn't done correctly, so you need to go back and do it. And so, so loads of people just basically said, nah, this is it. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> I think uh, Shay Anderson also makes a good point on this. It's uh, 25 years out of Mormonism, but I still know what I know. The crimes are still real. 
Mm-hmm. And exactly. I, it's, uh, you know, I think that's a very, very good point. And one thing on that real quick, Poke, is mm-hmm. I've, yeah. Mormonism has come up a lot in the comment section. And um, it's just really bothers me when people say that they either grew up in Mormonism or they're sympathizers. And I don't know why it's come up recently, but it's been bombarded with that interview with Aaron and other videos and stuff. And I've seen it elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Mormonism absolutely is a destructive cult. And it's really disheartening to people like that gal who knows the crimes and went through what she went through. I don't know her story, obviously, but I can imagine. And they attack me and other people for simply pointing that out when all you have to do is run it through the bite model, as we talked about. Right. I don't know why that's so controversial. I mean, Mormonism, maybe they hide it a little better. It's not as extreme as Scientology. I'm not saying that, but that's been recognized as a destructive cult for a long time. And yet there seems to still be controversy about that one in particular. Sorry to get up. Right. You're all right. No, go right ahead. That's uh... you may be able to easily leave Mormonism, but that's not. It's not like one characteristic makes a destructive cult. Like right. you know, if you run it through that bite model, Mormonism has long been considered by experts to be a destructive cult, and the key word being destructive. And you don't have to have every point. That's why Scientology is more extreme. And also, there are consequences if you leave Mormonism. Just because they don't have PIs following you doesn't mean that uh, right. You know, it's hard to can be hard to extract yourself or family might turn away from you or whatever oh yeah <laughs> i'm just going through all the comments here um, um there's a super chat from annie just there i don't know if you saw that uh, i'm so far behind let's okay. see here you know you can uh, star on poe um i'm sure you know that but you if you get far behind you can just hit the little star thing like next to their name so you can easily go back and access it oh okay annie yeah, said it's right. annie says do the four horsemen think dm has a puppet master Hmm. Interesting. Well, that I've never be heard that question before. And thank you for that super chat, Annie. Um, you know, I don't think so. I think he is so engrossed in in being the person in charge that I, I doubt he would uh, he would allow someone to pull him around by the strings. I mean, let's face it: when you start hearing the stories about how he um, he, you know, I guess Elrond had basically dismissed him. And sent him off to do other things. And he said, nope, not happening. Came right back and went right back to work. And look where he is now. I think the only people of real significance that did have anything personally over Dave Miscavige and were a real threat were Pat and Nanny Broker. Um, I think that's why he spent millions of dollars following them for 25 years or something like that, 30 years. Yeah. Um, millions of dollars sending private investigators to follow them because... Um, they were the ones that were ultimately supposed to take over the church when LRH died. Um, right. And they left the church and kind of went about their their daily life. And I think those are the only two people that David Miscavige saw as a real threat to his leadership because they could realistically at any point, and they have the evidence and the backing to, to say and stand up and say, look, Dave Miscavige isn't, you know, and have a case and and they right. challenge his power. Um, obviously, one of the, I think Pat died and Annie is still alive or the other way around. I think it's Pat that died. But essentially, they've kind of retired and are living their quiet life and haven't right. spoken out against Scientology. And I don't think they ever will. Um, but those are the only people that are really a thorn in his side. I mean, you think about Claire Headley and Mike Rinder and Marty Rathbun, they've all spoken out against Scientology and revealed some really horrible things. But he's kind of got away with a lot of it. He hasn't stood trial. He hasn't um, you know, lost a court. He hasn't been toppled. His power hasn't been challenged within Scientology. I think there is a big threat with the tax exemption thing. There's a threat with the human trafficking case he's named as a defendant. But this is kind of just a day in the life of Dave Miscavige. I think the real thing that he is concerned about is losing his grip on Scientology. And he just shuts down any potential threat to that as soon as possible. So there's no one that kind of is able to exert enough control and power over him that he doesn't have complete power and control. And on a broader scale, the rabbit hole wiki says he shows up as a list of quote of CIA quote resources. And that's a whole nother rabbit hole. I have a little bit of a different Mm -hmm. take on that. I think that they are protected, but that's not something we're going to cover in five minutes, (laughs) but yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page with you wiki. Um, I don't think David is just like Hubbard, just, you know, being let allowed to do all the shit and not take action. 
let's see here. Let me get into a couple of these starred ones. We got uh, um, Marilyn. I did Holmes. just see. Sorry, very quickly, it's gone oh. now. But I did see a comment. I think you brought it up on the screen earlier. I think I I was talking too much. But um, someone right. asked, "Is there a way we can see all of the comments from everyone's stream?" Yeah, that they're from there. all. They're yeah, from all. I any any stream you're that. on they're all you'll yeah, see all whatever, at the same whatever, time. whatever whatever channel you're using to watch this the comments are and all of the, the comments from all channels so you're not missing out anything don't worry um going back through these start um claire claire is a class act i think her demeanor body language and speaking skills will lend her major credibility yeah, with the too. jury definitely um definitely. and folks if you don't know who marilyn is she is the she's the one that created the... those marilyn those are so funny yeah. and so good you got to actually put it on the bobblehead because it looks amazing and she's going to be a uh, guest on my channel yeah that's up, right so. that's awesome um i'm looking yeah, forward marilyn really to see the various ones that you've made and maybe poke and try them out live so we can oh, see the merch we can see the merch you know that'd be crazy yeah, yeah. I, well i definitely want uh want some of her have her send me some photos of some of her other work the baby zenus yeah. are amazing oh, there's, uh, oh let's baby. see here <laughs> h4m street team but the thing that has not changed is science is scientology cannot scientologists cannot report to the police on other scientologists yeah that's and, true yeah i mean that's uh that's very true they have no whole policies on that oh yeah we've uh, we've been over that and uh alex you sent me the uh the actual tech on that or the rules mm -hmm. from scientology mm -hmm. i'm going to be bringing that up in a uh video for too long here one love fifty one thousand. question when you say to about when you say about taking courses do you go in a classroom with other people or are you doing it on your own just wondering it can be both um i'm you can take extension courses if you're like that Katie Loman girl, I believe that her name was the outlet that Andrew Gold interviewed. She's kind of like a dilettante Scientologist and lives out in the sticks. So mm -hmm. there's no org for her to go to. So she might be taking somebody in that situation might be taking extension courses where they, you know, you, you fill out the crap and then you send it back and they'll grade it. Uh, other than that, you do go down and take courses and to be a real Scientologist, I would say that, um, I mean, they'll count anybody like Katie, just taking extension courses. But the real Scientology, you actually go down to an org or, um, well, they don't even have missions anymore, really. So, yeah, you go down to an org and you do courses right then and there. Right. I, I, I also heard uh, from several people talking about the fact that with the COVID and everything that was going on, that a lot of people weren't going into the actual orgs. They were allowing for the online courses. So that may be. Oh, yeah. Great. Point. Change it with that, too. Mm -hmm. um, Stephanie, thank you for that super chat. Why isn't there more fear for the personal safety of Claire? DM seems so sadistic and yeah, angry. She, I'm missing right. why violence to silence her would be a stretch to consider. Thanks for the conversation. They just don't do that. They, they, they're they so good at gaslighting and they can intimidate her to death if they wanted to. They don't have to kill her. And that I don't. That would be an absolute last resort in my opinion. I'm not mm -hmm. saying they haven't done that in the past. But a, an example of that is in Clearwater, Florida, there's a guy named Bob Minton who was right on their headquarters and taking them on. And he was a multimillionaire who was causing them some problems. They could easily take him out if they want to or stage a suicide. But what they did is just harass him, broke him where he wanted out of the game. And I think they contributed to his health and his untimely passing. And Mike has talked about that in the past. Uh, but we'd like to hear more about that because that was a good man who got broke by them. So that's how they would handle Claire, in my opinion. It puts too many eyes on them if they have her off or if she suddenly disappears. You know, there was speculation about that with yep. Lisa Marie Presley with the civil case with Danny. I don't know, guys. I mean, I you can't prove anything with Scientology. If they're going to do something at the worst case, and we can never prove murder, so it's all speculation, they would buffer it so many layers it would that you would never be tra traced back to Scientology. That's what Alex said earlier. If they're going to hire private investigators or some scumbag to go follow Aaron or something they make sure that it doesn't go back to them and they have several layers of buffering. I think also there's two things to consider. First of all, like Ron Miscavige, David Miscavige's father, when he left, there was a, a point when they were following him and thought he was having a heart attack. Right. And um, essentially they decided um, not to intervene and just let it happen, which isn't a crime. That's not, you know, they're not killing him. Yeah. However, they're deliberately not acting to save his life. I think that's the sort of thing Scientology are more likely to do is, you know, they won't interfere fear in that way because like you said it's too risky they know they've got eyes on them and they th there would it would especially if someone like claire if something 
nasty and horrible was to happen, you know, they would have a case on their hand. Like, you know, it would be very dodgy. So I don't think they would go that far because they know there's a lot of eyes on them. Um, and yeah, ultimately, we all we all do fear for Claire's safety in terms of it's a horrible thing to go through, and I wouldn't want that on anybody. But she's been fighting this fight for a long time. She knows exactly what games they play. Um, you know, Mark and Claire are a unit; they operate together. Um, they are they have the support of Mike and Aaron, and obviously all of us. Um, they are no strangers to this. They're not new to it, and they wouldn't have taken on this fight if they weren't aware of the tactics and consequences that Scientology will do. They will try and make her life a living hell, and they have done. Um, so, you know, she knows what she's getting into, and yes, I don't wish it on anybody. I think it's yeah. horrible, yeah. but she's strong. She'll take it, and she knows, so therefore she... And, and that's just a, a sign of her strength, that she knows that that's what they're going to do, and that she is willing anyways. to take on that fight. Like, for me, that just means massive respect to her because... Mm -hmm. You know, if you know that that's what they're going to do and you still go, I don't care, this is important to me, that just shows how strong she is as a person. Right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mandy Gonzalez. Doug, thank you for being, thank you. Being an ex-Mormon, there isn't a lot of validation that you left a cult. I know, and I'm sorry to hear that, Mandy. It fucking sucks. I'm, I'm on your side because I've heard plenty of horror. I, kn I know a decent amount about that. I've been learning a lot since I interviewed Cynthia a few months ago, and it's... I've heard horror stories and and the, and the comeback that people say is when I make that comparison, because it came up in the interview with Aaron about Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientology all being destructive cults. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised with the flack, um, the kickback, because I thought everybody knew that. And the, and the yeah. thing was, well, it's not as bad as Scientology. No, it's not. But that's Scientology is the worst and has the most mind control techniques. Even according to experts, it's one of the hardest. It takes the longest decompression. It's about 10 years if you've been in for any length of time. And it has the most comprehensive package of control techniques of almost all of the cults. That's not my opinion. That's by experts. And I, I think that one of the bigger points of it is, is that the more that we start exposing through these channels, what's going on with Scientology, it's also lending credence to the fact that these other groups are cults and that they are so. destructive and they're harming so. people in their lives. Because Scientology is minor compared to these other ones too. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, they have the Moonies, they have way more members. It's amazing that Scientology gets so much attention on it with only 30,000 members. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing, but they've, you know, look at how much money is going through there as compared to some of these other organizations. So that's uh well, the moon cold is, has far exceeds the, uh, the earnings oh, uh, of Scientology, but you make a good point, Poe, per the number of people that they have 30,000, give or take, mm -hmm. they have multiple billions of dollars. So yeah, their yeah. amount of money compared to the, and the, the Tom Cruise yeah. and everything, yeah. you know, they call them whales, the, the big yeah. spenders. Yeah. I don't know if that's what they actually call them in the cult or outside of the cult, but that's the word Tony likes to use. And I think it's a, a great word. Some, I think Catherine says that when she was in the cult, she would call them not whales, but oh, damn it. Catherine, you're going to have to remind me. She was in the Sea Oregon. They, she said they had a word for it that wasn't yeah. whales. Um, Jen writes, Apostate Alex, we see the comments you put up on the screen, but we don't see the live chat from the other channels, so we potentially miss out on seeing So to, right to clarify, for you guys in the live chat, it doesn't tell you whether the chat is from another stream or not. We on our back end system can see whether a chat is from my stream or someone else's. Um, but for you, it was a viewer, it will just appear like the chat, everyone's on the same channel. You can't differentiate. Yeah. So I can 100% guarantee and confirm that you see the chat from from everybody's stream um but it, you won't be able to tell the difference yeah i went i went into my youtube while we've been doing this and watched them was watching the live chat you're not missing on any of them the only way we know is there's a special mark they put by your uh, profile picture that shows us that you're from a different uh live stream um <coughs> big time agree with the assessment that lung okay Sorry. Thank you for muting. I think he would have just exploded the stream and thrown <laughs> Chad into the back of his room. <laughs> uh, Karma Gittin says, big time agree with your assessment of Claire, Alex. Um, yeah. I, let's see. <coughs> um, let's see I think here. Claire's a great person and she's putting up a fight. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think one thing that people perhaps don't give Claire enough um, credit for is 
she's been doing this a very long time and she and mike and mark sorry are particularly they're not just people that talk out about scientology and share their story they do loads of work behind the scenes right yeah. claire has taken scientology to court she and both of them are the sort of people that they are prioritizing action rather than press and publicity and as much as sharing the story is a really important thing they are the sort of people that actually have taken on this fight more than just talking about it they are act proactively doing doing actions right which i think is is more important i think for being you know everyone looks at her she's quiet she seems very uh reserved in how that she handles things but i don't think people realize just how strong she is i think I they think. do realize that I think they, she, if they she, don't now, they're going to. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're oh. saying, though. She seems sweet, innocent, and reserved, but I have a feeling they're oh, going to have their hands full with her. It's always I the mean, quiet little ones like her that are the most dangerous. So This is know. the thing. I think I just, you know, the whole YouTube thing is very new, right? Mark and mm -hmm. um, Claire have only been on YouTube a few months. They started, um, I think it was January or something, or December. Um, so... I just want to remind everyone, this is not a new thing, right? Claire and Mark have been fighting Scientology for probably about two decades. They have taken Scientology to court. They have both had individual court cases. Like They have been working um, against Scientology since the noughties, right, I believe. Um, and so it's not a new thing. Scientology don't look at her as a new threat and think, oh, what are we going to do about Claire? They've already got a game plan. They've already had... Uh, there's a whole history there um so you know they know what to expect she knows what to expect i think the difference here is the level of support she is getting from the public and the level of support from other sptv members just strengthens her case because it shows that there are more people speaking up uh colonel brock and by the way my bobblehead is think a big thank you to colonel brock there um anything you say about claire can be used against her in court true but the thing about it is is that they're going to hit with so many different things i personally don't know claire all i'm speaking about is what i know from her history and what i've seen from her channel so anything that i'm going to put out there about her they can try to use it in court all they want to but it's all hearsay which is going to actually knock it out of court based on mm. that alone that's so. the thing i think all of us here you can take that um make that assumption right i've never met claire in person um i've only ever seen her on live streams i've spoken to her a little bit privately but nothing of depth about scientology it's just more being like uh, you know about the sp shop and stuff like this so right. um yeah everything that we have said here um and most people are saying online is just opinion it's hearsay yeah. it's not a statement exactly. of fact because we didn't work with claire in the church we weren't there for any of it we don't know her personally um so therefore it doesn't really stand in in court as far as my understanding of it um because anyone can make a video and say anything about someone that doesn't therefore mean it's admissible as actual evidence against our person in court and according to the stand league none of us are experts so yeah, yeah thanks expert. for thanks for Stand's clarifying an that that yeah. we should have put a disclaimer these are our opinions and conjectures yeah. we're just having I mean, a we'll, chat we'll do that now these are these are what we've learned from watching videos and things like that but we don't know claire personally well doug you might um but i never met claire the, my only quote-unquote expertise um is just being an ex-scientologist for a large portion of my um i got really deep into this fucking thing for a long period of time um, and there's a lot of people talking about they can't see the chats from the other ones. The only um, thing that won't show up on mine, I think, are the super chats. I don't know if they show up after it's published yeah. or not. That's the only thing you'll miss on my channel. Yeah. On everybody else's channel, you should be able to see everything, including the super chats. And that's and because my, be my channel's the, not monetized. I may be able to see them all through my YouTube channel because it's it's streaming through mine. As I'm point. going to do a test here just to prove to everybody, right? Okay. I'm going to leave a comment, right? I've just left a comment from not my stream okay. so if you can see this comment we're just wondering about the super chats alex um hey chad are you seeing the super chats on your channel because you're not monetized either right right i think i'm on my wait i'm on stream here looking at the comments though I it's no big deal i mean yeah. the, literally the only thing that will be missing because i watched the one of the live chat replays the other day the only thing that might be missing on mine and chad's channel since we're not monetized is the um is the super chats but when i was streaming it on my channel 
I had no problem pulling up the super chats when I was live. So I don't know. It's not even that yeah. big of a deal. Oh, if you yeah. if you want to leave super chats, um, I monetize Poe. I think you are as well. Um, so you can right. leave super chats on there. Um, but yeah, so I just left a comment saying hello um, from Poe's channel, right? So that just evidence, as I said, you guys aren't aware it won't show you that the comment is from someone else's stream, right? All we can see in the back end is that there's a comment that's, from someone else's stream i can't tell whose comments from what streams um it, the comments are shown to everybody yeah I'm, I'm um also to... there's something to consider you may not be seeing comments because at the top of the live chat there's an option that says top chat or all chat right so if there are comments you're not seeing just double check at the top oh, of the live point. chat you've hit you've you've put That's all live comments because so if you have top comments or top chat which is the default it will just show you the ones that are getting a lot of attention whereas if you put all comments you'll see everyone's comments so just check that you've got all live chat selected nice alex stuff. knows the stuff i'll tell you what right am i right alex knows the stuff <laughs> Dude, this is yeah, like, I know. I He's can the... talk about this all day. I've got you know a decade of experience in it. Whenever I, I have questions too, this is my go-to go guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I was just asking him earlier about some uh, art programs. So believe me, he's uh, he's on top of things that you know. I'm an old dog. It's you know, and they, you know what they say about old dogs and new tricks. Uh, let's see here, Carolyn Morgan. Also, I'm sure that Scientology has OSHA watching everything Claire does on YouTube. Yeah. And I, I would agree with that. I, From what I hear, they watch pretty much all these channels. So, There's would, so many, though, now, Poe. They might actually not have the manpower to watch all content all the time. I don't have a problem if they're being overwhelmed. That doesn't uh, hurt yeah. my feelings. <laughs> so, no, that's the way to do it. Uh, let's see here. Getting back to some more of these. Uh... Um, just for context, there is someone whose job it is in OSA. Um, literally Catherine confirmed this because she knew the person. There is someone who their full-time job in the Sea Org, 9 a.m. to 8 or no 9 p.m. seven days a week is to wow. watch all of the no content way. online well, and read more content and write reports on it. That's that all they do. Amazing. Yeah. That and that segues is amazing. Amazing. How does that not get them out, Alex? I mean, you yeah. think after that every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. that they would blow at some point? Because you've got to remember that like wow. Pete, you're only going to be given that job if you're fully indoctrinated and fully trusted yep. and you fully right. believe in it. Damn and right. they wouldn't put anyone on that job because it's a very trusted position. You still so, think it would break them though, man. God, it's too much content to take in. Too many things to batter yeah but around. if it does if you if you have in the back of your mind all oh, these guys are just making it all up they're talking rubbish um or even if you know that they're not making up and you just think that they just want to destroy scientology mm -hmm. um you're not going to listen to it too much it's like if you were to watch mm. let's not get political here but if you were to watch a Please political don't. tv channel or something that was completely extremely opposite to your political beliefs mm -hmm. there's an element where you're just kind of watching it and laughing at it and thinking oh, i right. don't agree with this how ridiculous right it's not going to change your political opinion by watching something that is extremely opposite to what you believe and that's the mindset they're looking at all this content with i, I think it to me it would be like watching c-span I literally want to pull my own hair out after a while. That's you know, sure. Tori Chrisman, though, got out that way. She was kind of, she was public, but she was hired by OSA to do their dirty work online. And that's what kind of caused her to escape. So you, like Alex says, wow. you have to have the most indoctrinated and the most hardcore oh, yeah. in order to get to that position. And, uh, you know, folks, that segues into if you are a member of any organization that would lead into this cult lifestyle, just Remember, there are people out there. We care. We want you to enter normal life. Get away from these cults that are destroying you and your families. If you're a member of Scientology and you want to make that break, the Aftermath Foundation is there for you. And uh, Goldie, if you could, please, if you could put the link in there for it. It can be completely anonymous. No one knows what you're doing. They get you out, try, help to get you back on your feet, get you going again. We've already had people on here that have been helped out by the Aftermath Foundation. We care. We want you to have a good life. We want you to be the best you that you can be and live a productive, successful life. So if you're afraid, don't be. The, uh, the <clears throat> Aftermath Foundation is there for you. Um, Marilyn, thank you for that super chat. Uh, hi, guys. Great stream tonight. Very interesting. 
question if dm were to ever go to prison would be would he be able to run cos from there like other cult leaders does it depend on the state they're in that's a great question that is a good question that's a fascinating thing to ponder it, you know <laughs> yeah. what in my opinion it comes down to the exact context of what he's being convicted of and how right because there are certain things where i can see like if it's fraud or something like this which i know is not a prison serving time but say it's something along those lines like a commercial corporate crime where the victims are the banks or the big farmer or whatever right um scientologists i would imagine would look at that as like wow dave miscavige is going down as a sacrifice for Scientology, and yeah. that actually would elevate him, right? You look at Mary Sue Hubbard, um, Elwin Hubbard's wife, went to prison for the Operation Snow White infiltration of the US government, um, and she was seen as a martyr, right? And I think it depends on... I don't think he'd realistically be able to run the church from prison, um, so it's. I would imagine he would appoint someone to run it in his place, but very much still have his hands in the kind of control of the church and um, but he'd go down as martyr whereas if he went to prison for something more nefarious um you know to do with some sort of assault or some sort of attack or violent crime or something along these lines i think that would open up the doors for scientologists realizing he personally has done horrible things and has been responsible for horrible things and that will open up the floodgates to thinking perhaps that you know he might not be the demigod that people potentially see him as. So it, it totally depends on what he goes down for. Yeah, I, I agree. Plus, it, it's also going to come down to a judge's ruling on sentencing, whether or not they can have contact with the the members of the uh, community. So uh, Angel Hugger, mm-hmm. great uh, comment here. Osa, you will be wildly successful out in this world with your work ethic, and you'll get more sleep, less drama, and abuse. People are really nice out here. And yeah, that's a that's a great point. She brought up that last part because some somebody in Osa listening right now would not think that we're nice people, and it it's quite a shock when you realize just how friendly people are compared to that world. So it's really true. If any of you guys are listening, I know it sounds bizarre. Well, you but, know, like when uh, talking to Catherine and talking to you, Doug, and you, Alex, and you guys talking about how your perception of the world as compared to what you realized once you left COS. It's night and day. Was, yeah. It's so, so radical, um, Poe, okay. that I'm still recovering and thankful to this day, 15 years later. And that leads into Carolyn Morgan's question. I wonder if the length of recovery, length of recovery from Scientology has to do with the immersive vol- vocabulary. That's part of it. Um, that's she's referring to their language and they have so many words that that's part of like trying you know learn how to speak like a normal human but he literally grabbed everything including the cia's mk ultra project techniques to beat the shit out of our brain so that's just one of many but that's very effective and very extensive and I, i can tell you even you know from military and from law enforcement there's nomenclature there's vocabulary there's things that we use I still use on a daily basis and probably will till the day I die. It's once you start getting into, into using that vocabulary and that nomenclature, it, it's hard to break you of it. And especially it really when you get around others, you're going to start using it with them and you're in the way that you speak. So yeah, it's uh, some interesting stuff. Another good point here, nation of Islam linking up with Scientology cause some concerns something about brain test or refreshed do you guys know what that uh i don't know what that means um i don't know what that's specifically referring to but um i i am aware the nation of islam are um heavily involved in scientology um there was a big following in london of nation of islam (coughs) people um studying scientology tech um aaron smith 11 on growing up in scientology did a um sort of not expose but did a whole video on it the other day um so i encourage people to go and watch that um i think the nation of islam are treated differently in scientology we were briefed as staff at london org on how to talk to them about scientology differently to everybody else because Mm. nation of islam followers believe in obviously islam um and scientology there comes a point in scientology where you cannot um believe in another faith right when you get to that level um but so we were told that to talk to them as though scientology is this applied 
um, principles and techniques that they are using to further their understanding of their faith rather than it's a faith of its own right. And um, so that's very much how it's positioned to them. Um, but I don't know exactly what that comment was referring to. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, Denver Stevo, thank you for that super chat. In prison, would DM be someone's friend or would his diminutive stature keep him safe? Um, I think we all know where that would lead to, if you've seen anything about prison. <laughs> so, uh, Let's see. Brian Rick <sighs> in one. Um, this might be almost impossible to know, but does anybody have an idea how much money Tom Cruise has handed over or donated splurged to Scientology? millions there was a oh, yeah. so it, there is they use so they publicize every few months or so um the donor list of how what levels people have reached in the ias the international association of scientologists to show how much someone has donated to the ias um and tom cruise reached this le, the highest level that has ever been which was i think it was like 10 million dollars or something like this years ago um he was the first person to reach that level which is the highest level of like oh. honors of donations level um and since then they haven't published his name so i don't think that means he's not donating anymore i think they're just keeping it a bit more private but i would estimate tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars uh this is an interesting one this is from goldie doug often refers to a book called combating cult mind control by stephen hassan easily found with a quick internet search you want to go into that uh doug uh, explain a little bit about that yeah, both of his books are really good. I don't encourage him to get the newer ones because he just, I don't know, man. You can actually write a book on cults and still be oblivious to other things, which is mind-blowing to me. I was going to have Stephen on, but we're not allowed about not allowed to talk about the you-know-what on YouTube, so I wasn't able to talk to him about that. It's a whole other story. But it doesn't matter, right? So some things you may agree or disagree, but I try to throw out the books, you know, if it's, I pretend that, like, let's say nobody knew anything about any of this stuff. Like I didn't, where would be like a really good place to start to cut through the bullshit and to show somebody what is a cult, what is brainwashing, what is mind control and what is hypnosis? Because I don't know about you, Poe, but I didn't learn any of that shit. I thought hypnosis was swinging a watch in someone's face. So that book is fantastic as a gradient, as they say in Scientology. For anybody to understand and start looking at uh, their groups and stuff differently there's plenty of other books that are just as good and better but i always go back to that one because like i said i'm thinking about it from the perspective even though we sometimes go over people's head with the nomenclature what, just give it to someone simply pretend they know nothing about it and and then offer them stuff that they can look at that's and exactly what happened to me by the way poe i mean i um I've been going down the rabbit hole for 15 fucking years, not even knowing there was a rabbit hole before that. And that was the first book that launched that journey. I, I have a lot of fun going down those rabbit holes, to be honest with you. I actually uh, hate it and find it terrifying. And I, I, what I've discovered is just, I don't think most people would believe just yeah. like with, just like with Hubbard, it took a long time to accept what Steve Hassan's book was forcing, putting my nose into it's, it sucks that this is true. I freaking believe that guy, Poe. I mean, he was oh, yeah. like, I know people think it's funny and it is it is funny, but it's not funny when you're in it and you really are under a spell and you realize what, how dangerous it was with you being completely oblivious of it and probably not going to be able to suss it, minus something like Steve's book. Well, we've talked about that before, about mm -hmm. growing up in this. And it's no different than growing up Christian, growing up uh, Hindi or yeah. Buddhist. You're, that's what you're raised to believe. So it's, I don't know, it, it's such a deep traumatic thing to find out that this world that you've grown up believing in doesn't exist. Yes, it's an so, illusion. You know, that's, that's completely understandable. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, Juliana and everybody else that's watching, if you are on your phones, Alex uh, had posted a comment on it that it doesn't work the same on the YouTube app on the phones. So, yes, that was probably my my bad for assuming because I only really watch YouTube on my computer and I um, just consider most people other, which is a fault on my part. Um, yeah, on the app, if you're watching on your phone, um, 
I don't believe there's an option to show all messages. It just gives you the top chat. Um, so it will only show you certain selected comments. It will show you comments from all streams, but it won't show you all of the comments um, unless you select live or all messages, which you can do on the computer. There may be a way to do it on the app. I'm not sure. Um, but when you first select it, it might not show straight away a bunch of messages you missed because the top chat does select quite a large number of the messages. It just doesn't show all of them. Um, so so yeah, if you watch on the computer, you can definitely do it. I don't think you can on the on the on the phone. You may be able to, um, but you know, make sure you've selected all messages or live chat, and you will see them all. Um, yeah, and I, I can tell you uh, personally from my uh, when I go onto mine, we have something that as a content creator, it's called YouTube Studio, where we can go in and we can check all of our analytics, things like that. I can't get some of that stuff on my phone that I can if I'm on my laptop or on the, uh, the desktop computer there. So there's, there's a lot of changes to their app that you don't see when you're on an actual computer or a, uh, uh, a laptop there. Um, let's see. Did you catch Ann Hatta's uh, question? Very, very interesting. I'd love to hear uh, trying to get people's to responses. Let me get back up to that. I'm I can read it if you want Poe out loud while you're yeah, looking for it. Is that okay? Well, can, can you, uh, can you click on it and have it? Pop I'm up? not able to pull it up on my channel. Only the one running the show. It's your show. Oh, but okay. I can, I can I read it out while you're that. looking for it. It's about, I can't tell you where it's, it's at 6 13 PM and, and had a PTS. That's funny. Says yeah. Amy Scobie did a really beautiful testimony about her spiritual liberation after leaving the cult. And if you guys don't know what she's talking about, check it out because oh, it's kind of shocking. <laughs> Do you consider it a prison of the spirit too? I'm not going to touch that question. You guys can take it. I would, I would say any time where you allow an organization to alter the way you think with the way you act and put you in fear of losing contact with your family, with everyone else, I would consider that a prison of the spirit. Um, that's my personal viewpoint on something like that. What and, she's uh, talking about real quick, Poe, just to put it in context, is what people were saying in the comments is that it's cult hopping, jumping from one cult to another because she became Christian. She had, she really was like, had this revelation and she goes into great detail. It is beautiful, man. But some people were worried, holy shit, you just replaced one cult for another. I think that's what Anna had is asking. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but this part where she says, do you think, well, what Christ now I can't find it. So she said, after leaving the cult, do you consider it also a prison of the spirit too? And correct me if I'm wrong. And Hannah, there you go. It's back up there for you. What they're asking is, did she cult hop, which happens a lot. And like I said, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to interject my opinion. <laughs> I just want to hear what you guys have to say. Well, I look at it um, and I'm not trying to trivial trivialize either. Um, but when you see, people who've been in an abusive relationship and they come out of that relationship and uh, the people around them get so upset because it seems like they go right into that, <clears throat> that same kind of relationship with a different person. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you got to remember that it's, it's along the same lines. You have someone who is controlling you and they're trying to control your thoughts, your processes, all those different things. And I, it's very easy to get tripped up and get into another situation that was like the one you were in. A lot of people, you know, they, they feel comfortable in it and mm -hmm. like an abusive know, relationship, to, right? Yeah. You must've seen that a lot in law enforcement. They go back to yeah. their partner, right? Well, back to the partner or they go into a relationship with someone no else and yeah. the, uh, uh, it's, it's back to the same thing that they were having a, you know, in the previous relationship. So it's, it's, I can understand, the thought process on that. Um, <clears throat> I can't speak for Amy. I, yeah, I know me that, neither. Um, but she seemed people... really happy and she was beaming and everything and was kind of, um, yeah, it, it's I don't want to say in... preaching, but it was, <laughs> right. I don't know, man. That's the one thing. That's a great question. Just has re-stimulated me as they say in the cult, because yeah, man, I wanted to make damn sure that the last thing I do is rejoin a cult. And this is why I push the deep programming so much on my channel. Cause in my opinion is, you know, when you're in something like Scientology, especially if you grow up in it and if that's all you know, a lot of time has to be spent figuring out, well, what the hell do I believe? Because I can speak for myself. Most of my life, I believe what I was told to believe. 
so that process of reevaluating everything you believe in, I was like, took that very seriously because Scientology was so traumatizing and so invisible to me, the trap that I wanted to be very careful never to have that happen again because my heart couldn't take it a second time. I'm like this. I learned a lot by being under mind control and getting out, but I'm going to make damn sure that this doesn't happen again. And I'm always on guard for that. Right. And you know what? I think if you don't heal the trauma, the childhood trauma, what led us into the cult? What, you know, L. Ron Hubbard was my replacement father figure. The cult gave me something I wasn't getting from my family. They kind of led me there and encouraged me there. And they were Scientologists too. So if we, it's just my opinion, but if from personal experience, unless I healed the trauma that got me in there to begin with, along with Scientology, I'm always going to be susceptible to going back to an abusive relationship. That's exactly the same. The girls I was dating was like my mother. They, mm -hmm. uh, they were just like the cult experience and minus going within and healing and being sus on, you know, things for a while. I was, I could feel the pull and automatically attracting these kind of people. That's all I wanted to say. Good point. Just a, good point. Oh, thanks, man. And some people were asking, why isn't Chad talking more? That's well, right. We got to ask him some well, questions from Osa's viewpoint. I want to I wanna say something, okay? This is what Chad wants to say right now. Please. You guys are talking all the goobly gobbly about the SPTV <laughs> and the comments and stuff. <laughs> Clearwater Chad will be taking full custody of any and all SPTV. Clearwater Chad will have creative control over every and all SPTVs. Everyone will obey Clearwater Chad. Thank you. Please do tell how you plan to implement said plan. <laughs> it's all in the way. Are you going to do it, Chad? Are you going to do it? You think <laughs> just saying it makes it happen? Are you going to postulate it? Is it just going to magically happen? <laughs> you will find out, my friend. Okay. Ooh, I'm scared. Osa, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, Tarkina Meyer said, Amy said she did not jump to a particular church or doctrine, just Christian by faith. Yeah. So. I think that's you guys the key check thing. It out. Yeah, that's the key thing we talked. To, I talked with Doug about this the other day about the difference between a religious belief and oh, a coercive right. group, right? And oh, yeah. you know, we don't need to get into it now, but yeah, yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a faith and having a belief and wanting more from life, right? Um, the difference is whether the group is coercively controlling people in its nature, deliberately, not deliberately, whatever. Um, and so. I can see absolutely how some people, you know, the questions that Scientology answers for you are the big existential life questions that are only really answered by uh, groups of a, a spiritual nature. Um, and so it is kind of natural to still have those questions, um, even Definitely. though you've left Scientology. And there's nothing wrong with finding the answer to that elsewhere in another faith. The difference is, um, like, you know, is the Christian church as a whole coercively controlling its members no, um, there are different factions and denominations that, of course, are a bit more extremist and a bit more cult-like and so on. Um, but ultimately, as a whole, um, it, it's not a coercive group in the same way Scientology is. And so that's the thing is looking at where you find those answers you are looking for in Scientology elsewhere, whether that's in yourself and you don't follow any faith now or whether you find it elsewhere. Um, it, it's about whether you're in a manipulative group rather than a group that just wants everybody to succeed and do well in life. And that's why I think Amy Scobie turned to Christianity because she found the answer she was looking for and it's helped her, but there's no one um, forcing her to disconnect from people and manipulate people's emotions and all of this sort of stuff doesn't happen in the denomination of Christianity that Amy is involved in. And, you know, although it's not my faith and my belief, all the power to her and I respect that and encourage people to go and, you know, do that work and figure out what is it you were looking for in Scientology? Yeah. Is it possible to find those answers elsewhere? And there's nothing wrong with it. Also, and Ellie Mae says we need some Chad merch. Give him some suggestions. I bet you he'd make it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm thinking he should be putting some of those paintings onto a shirt. So, um, <laughs> maybe you Fon could have Clearwater Chad on the front with the painting and then Osa on the back with <laughs> something. It's possible. Yeah. Like, Nothing's uh, off the table. Everything's up. Okay. Like a staff t shirt from the, uh, the concerts and stuff. On the front, you have the logo, and on the back, Osa. Well, I, I, this is maybe a bit of a spoiler, but I was going to make an SPTV crew shirt so that it mm. says SPTV crew on the back in a similar vein. Um, and that's something I was going to create for our SPTV fest that we're going to do in October, oh, nice. which maybe you is a bit what? of a tangent, but that's something I was looking at doing. And I don't see a problem with you having those available for anyone who wants to get them at the fest. Yeah. 
So as long as it's great. cleared by Clearwater Chad first. Of course, well, that's a given. 10X, 10X, that's whatever. the only clear that matters in life is clear with Clearwater Chad. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Laura Font, what should someone say in a letter to the Ways and Means Committee to get them to look into revoking COS tax exemption? Has been asked of Mike, but looking forward to your input. Uh, I can tell you personally, um, I've been speaking with a member of the United States Congress. It's not as easy as people think it is. Once years ago, the it was the law itself was manipulated to where it is extremely hard to get that taken taken away. Is it impossible? No. We just need a Congress and a Senate that are willing to change the letter of that law and make it so that if you are violating the law in the way that your organization as a religion with tax exemption operates, then it should be easier. They should be able to immediately revoke it without whether or not uh, the IRS or anyone else has anything to say about it. So that's something I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be having a member of the United States house of representatives. It's actually going to be a guest on the channel it's just oh. everybody knows everything in the world right now is blowing up politically so it's yeah. just waiting for a time to get them on here so excellent um i think that with, with that the, the power is in the numbers right and obviously mm -hmm. i don't live in the u.s so my understanding of the u.s political and judicial system is limited but from my understanding it's similar to what we have in the uk with writing to a member of parliament right mm -hmm. um these exactly. politicians are elected to represent you as voters right so it's power in numbers if you have a local representative that's on the house ways and means committee um writing them a letter to make them aware that you as a citizen are concerned about x y and z um and you want them to do something about it and raise it with the committee um that's all you have to do and if these people receive one letter, they're not going to do anything. But if right. lots of people start writing letters, then it becomes a public concern. And therefore, the politicians have a legal right to bring that up and represent your um, your views. So it's power in numbers. It's not so much about exactly what. It's more the numbers and the more people that raise their concerns. That's what's exactly. going to get them to look into it. And folks... Um... I'm going to look into it. I'm going to actually contact uh, StreamYard to see what's up. I don't know if you're not receiving the, the chats or you're not seeing them. I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to do a test, right? So Jen Wright is just saying she doesn't see it. <laughs> Are we so still on test. that? Oh, here's the God. test. So Jen Wright, watch this. I'm not saying this to everybody because it's unfair. So Jen Wright, go and watch this stream from my channel. I am now, and then make sure you've pre pressed live chat, all chats, not top chats. Um, and I am now going to put a comment in another stream. Um, and if you can see it, then great. Um, if you can't see it, then we will bring it up. But my understanding from everything I've read is that all live chat should be showing in the stream. Anyway. Let's see. There's a super chat. You put something in as a super chat? No, no, someone's put a super chat. So yeah. I've just commented on someone else's stream. So Did Jen you comment Wright, at yeah. Jen Wright? Uh, yep. Yeah. But the tag I can see. I have never had a problem seeing all three at the same time yeah, ever. It shows you, it I don't know what the hell's going on. Moy, I'm look, the way I'm seeing it is it shows you that you're from a you're in a different stream where you posted that from. Uh, the rabbit, the rabbit hold dot wiki. Uh, I think this is going to go over their chat. head, my friend. I know who this guy is. He's got a oh. lot of knowledge, man. But th this is the psych requires an hour just to break this down. Go ahead. Oh my goodness! Do you want to? I I I, don't I do want to. What... I want to get this guy on and break this down. What he's yeah. talking about, actually, because he's an ex Scientologist. And if um, you could, um, but we email can... uh, Doug and myself. Uh, yeah. So um, let's talk we'll... offline, my friend. I think yeah. you're going over the head of this group. <laughs> no offense, man, but this is like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, we need We need a couple hours to break this whole area down. Um, and we will do that, by the way, because I, I want to say that 95% of Scientology is straight based on Crowley's work. There has, I've been meaning to do a video about that. I am and, so surprised by how much I'm finding out. I'm reading a couple of different books that are go over this and it is amazing how much he's based it off of yeah it hasn't really wow. been done and john atac knows a lot about it but he'll only go so far i think it'd be really cool to do one video where it's really showing because when i learned it, it's 
I have all of Crowley's books and shit. I think it's all gibberish and stuff, but there's something to know there. And mm -hmm. it is amazing uh, when it's laid out how much I think people have a big cognition because there's a, he threw everything into that cult, but it's 95% straight ripped off from Crowley's works. Anyways. Yeah, so, well, that and how much of Dianetics was part of a Freudian treatment policy that Freud dismissed because it was causing so many problems with his patients. Yeah, well, yeah. Hubbard knew it, it, that it was creating uh, the patient to latch on to him and to mm -hmm. not set him free. I forget the word. Somebody in the comments will know what it is. I can't believe I forgot right. the word. We'll Freud see. was aware that that ab reaction therapy and what he was doing was causing people to rely on their therapist more. And Hubbard grabbed that because that's what he wanted. But the I, framework, starting with level zero, the magical memory, the birth engram, Dianetics, which comes from Diane, all of these words and symbols and everything, including the crossed out Christian cross, all come from Crowley. But like I said, man, we'll definitely do a yeah, video. And we remember we posted the uh, the photo of the cross uh, a couple of live streams. Yeah, back. the Rosicrucian cross. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Annie Kurtz, if you traumatize someone and often enough, the brain tries to protect and things get blanked out and changed another reason why it's difficult to leave um exactly um that's one of those things where you know repressed memories things like that where your brain um trauma traumatic memories uh i forget all the nomenclature on them but the fact is is that your brain will do what it feels it needs to do to protect you yep and that's that's and where have we been trauma-based mind controlled more than in, in the last few years we've had everything in their mother thrown at us if you don't think that creates an effect on people's brains and blocks certain things out it does when you start looking at this generation that's the younger generation that's coming up Still and you see it. how much they they are traumatized yeah and their you know their need for calming and soothing things and then you realize exactly like you said, how they are being almost traumatized on a daily basis through yeah. the internet, the you the through the social media, through the the mainstream media, all of that. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. I I mean, I I I'm not saying this to be pessimistic, but I'm almost fifty, or am I fifty? When I'm gonna be fifty in July. I don't even know what month we're in. Uh, April. Mm. I'm so glad I'm not a boomer because I don't want to be here for another no. 20 or 30 years. Fuck that, man. Because, you know, <laughs> the world that I grew up in, I'm sure every generation says this, but it is different with the tech coming in. Um, I miss the 80s and 90s, and I nostalgically watch those movies, man, because the world we live in today is so sick and insane. I can barely stand it, to be honest with you. And thank you for another super chat there. The Hymn of Asia, 1974. That's Hubbard right. Himself, Buddha reincarnate. Whom he thought he was Buddha and Lucifer incarnate. I mean, could you be any more wow. of a narcissist than that, dude? <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty high-reaching thing. Impressive. There. Might as well grab, you know, both sides of the spectrum, right? Yeah, my goodness. Uh, let's see. Laura Huddleston, Doug is right about Crowley. I knew all about Crowley in high school because of a boyfriend who was into his stuff. I recognize the telltale signs of ethics officer downplayed when I brought it up. And they would, because they're not even aware of it. I didn't know anything about Crowley, even though he was telling me on the Philadelphia doctor chorus lecture, number one about Crowley. And he says at the end, I'm the Prince of darkness. You know, who do you think I am? He's giving us clues on the courses that I took and stuff, but I knew nothing about Crowley mind. None of this stuff. I grew up in Scientology. So that um that's that's absolutely true but nobody in scientology knows that maybe a couple but you know I, that wiki wiki rabbi rabbi ricky whatever sorry i keep fucking up your name bro <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to say his real name live so we'll stick to right. he um he was he said that he went to saint hill and they had the master theory on which is crowley's famous book in the freaking library because they have to have all the works at saint hill that might come up in the material right. so you can go look it up and I don't even think the supervisor, you know, because he questioned him on it. He he was aware of it when he was growing up in Scientology. And he, I, he you know, I don't even think the supervisors at St. Hill uh, and they dismissed him as no big deal. Nobody knows in Scientology that he was a fanatic of Crowley. And if right. they do, they, they just pass it off as, oh, that's just Ron being Ron. Mm -hmm. well, I think John, John Atap did a really good video and yeah. um, several videos yeah. about it. And I encourage people to go and watch those. Um, the thing people need to understand is there's never a point in Scientology, like Doug was saying, where Aaron Hubbard comes out and says 
I believe yeah. in cronyism and all of this. Yeah, like what, it, it, what the this, the allegation, I suppose, is more that he was a follower of Crowley and he used Scientology to as a um, as a tool to promote his Crowleyite beliefs. It's there's never a point in Scientology where they go right. Actually, Scientology is just you know Crowleyism and mysticism and all of that. That doesn't happen. So right. people aren't aware. But actually, what it is is a way of him promoting his beliefs and furthering the Crowleyite yeah. cause. Yeah. Um, go and watch John Atex videos on it for yeah. sure. And just while I'm in the middle of a sentence, and um, I did a bit of a check and I went on to Chad's stream and just watched the live chat and it's the first time it's ever happened so when i've done this before i've gone and watched other streams and i can see all the live chats but for some reason this one um i stand corrected on, on chad's stream you can't see all of the live chat um that i can see here so that's mm. interesting i don't know why it hasn't worked it has historically like i've watched um live streams before and seen all the chats so i'm sorry guys that um yeah i was wrong it, it's it's not we'll work it out it could be chats. Because it's a four manner. We've we've done three before. I know it works for three. So possibly because we have four, it's the first time we tried it. But I'm sure yeah, we can work out the case. I know we're there's also to consider this is a new part of YouTube. It's only a new yeah. feature, so it could a just streamer, be a bug. You mean, with, right? Um, well, no, YouTube no, only YouTube. recently enabled the this feature, and then StreamYard are oh, a partner of YouTube. So I it's see. only a new thing. Um, so it could be a bug that they're working on, or it could just be you know my misunderstanding. But when we'll we have three people on StreamYard, you can definitely see all of, all of them. So Goldie is I, saying I no, it's sure. never. So I don't know. Oh, we'll, guys, we'll not... look into it. Okay, maybe, that's weird. maybe, yeah. But yeah, man, Barb, you can email me the those pictures as well. I'll make sure I put them on my community page on my YouTube channel. So she's uh, wanting to know about emailing the pictures of her SPTV uh, uh, tattoo. Uh, I can't believe okay. someone's actually gone and done that. Yeah, uh, Barb Sylvie. Uh, let me get to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, uh, yeah, she's uh, actually supposed to be getting it done. If she hasn't done it already, I believe she's getting it done uh, at 11 o'clock, I think, right there. Yes, Kimberly, I realize I, I said the wrong word with boomers. Thank you for the correct. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with these names for all the different... Uh, you're doing great, age man. Groups, you know. Well, I'm talking about the the different age groups and everything. The oh yeah, me neither. The X, the Y, the Z. I know, and it's like there's so many so. new things that we have to learn every week. I just tuned out a long time ago. I agree with Doug about the uh, generations. Doug, you said the '80s are are, are, are great. I like the yeah. '80s, and Chad is down. It's the '80s, and Chad is down with the ladies. Amen, brother. Wow. Yep. Are you allowed to do that as OSA? I thought they have strict 2D policies. <laughs> well, Chad has his own rules. He goes. I by. see. I see. <laughs> I'll be sure to let the midget know. Okay, man. Okay. Yeah, Probably and and I agree. There's a lot of people agreeing with you, Doug. There, it's uh, you know, I, I'll be 55 in a few months, and quite honestly, I'm at the point where I just don't care about Me labels and stuff anymore. Neither, so. dude. There's, uh, let's see yeah. rabbit hole wiki will you guys read project blue beam wikipedia page and original <laughs> ot we'll get right on it brother <laughs> hey come on the freaking show man and we'll break yeah. that down bro definitely email us uh yeah. doug and i both would uh would love yeah, to talk long to overdue you. um <laughs> let's see and jen uh jen says she's officially dropping it and she wants to okay, thank you, thank Alex. You. And again, it's a credit to you all. You have created such an amazing community. Oh, thanks. Thank and I think I think that's one thing I'd be upset about too. Is is there's so much in our community with how everyone supports and just watching the the comments going back and forth with everybody. There's no anger. There's no hate. Any of that. Um, Maxwell Edison's mom. Hi guys from Arkansas. Thanks for the info and fun. Thank you for the super chat. Maxwell Edison's mom is a huge supporter of SPTV and she's definitely one of my biggest fans. So I just wanted to shout her out and say thank you. She's Excellent. really active in super chats and buying coffees and all of that. And she's amazing. So thank Excellent. you for all of your support. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's see. Escaping the cultivars. <laughs> eh? I take that's Canadian. I uh, love what, you, what you're doing, boys. Well, thank you, and thank you for that super chat. We the appreciate cult of each and every one that's of you. That's fucking awesome. I'm that's definitely stealing game, that from it? you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let's see cult here. Cult <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's see. I barely remember Hell this yeah. because I did them right. <laughs> nice. 
That's uh, the correct statement. I don't remember the 70s because I wasn't Because you weren't there. alive. You were in your past life, Alan. <laughs> I was a Alex pure little or... sperm in my father's bullsack. Yeah, see, for no, you uh, weren't. You were a thetan floating in another body, and then uh, you died and <laughs> yeah. went to the implant what, what station, you had your memories you? wiped, and then you got sent back down to Earth, silly boy. Maybe I was at a rate in a past life. So out ethic. That's terrifying. Oh Don't God. say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Just jumping back in, seeing if we have any more. Um... <laughs> Days but not choose on newborn. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, I wanted to see. He's, he's controversial, but a colonel always gets the floor in my chats. Throw, do you mind throwing that up there? Right. Days but not choose on. Okay, get that off of there. <laughs> I like his slightly out of line, controversial stuff. That's yeah, I like I love, I love Brock. He's, he's the, funny, he's man. hilarious. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. That's uh, Jester. All the best people are. We are conditioned to see intelligence as undesirable. Too many smart people and the government have rivals. I completely agree with that. And I do believe that we are dumbed down on purpose because when I came out of Scientology, my first question was why in the horse's ass was I not taught what I'm now learning about in fucking school? Because yeah. there's no way I would have been able to be controlled in the way that I was with the simple education that's completely off the news in any kind of discussion. And it's and not know, hard to find. Talking with Chris Shelton, we were talking about the fact of how people get drawn into things like that. And you see that a lot in, in school children where there is this mm -hmm. whole acceptance of wanting to be part of and being identified as part of a group and not feeling like an outcast. Mm -hmm. And that you know you see a lot of that with your your athletes in school because they're popular they're the ones mm -hmm. out there on the field getting all the attention so it's your your nerds and your geeks the people like me who were sitting That's in the was. computer lab in school that you know we were ignored simply for that fact and the word nerd and geek and all that became derogatory and i'm just so glad to see that they're nowadays becoming mainstream and and people are realizing that yeah that jock did great in high school, but now he's, he's weighing 350 pounds, he's got a huge loser. beer belly, can barely yep. walk downstairs by himself, and that nerd is now making <laughs> ten times the money. I've seen that. Yes, so that's true. I think now, this whole that whole topic to me is we might go down a bit of a rabbit hole here. Um, I find the whole concept of like that being really interesting because if you think about everything we know is like take out Scientology for a minute and just think about anyone norm like raised in a normal Western way. It's like, well, how, what is, how do we know what is right and what is wrong? The way of doing things, waking up in the morning, going to work or school and then coming out like the way that people generally live their lives um, is not set by anyone other than ourselves. And one thing that really highlighted it to me was I went to China as a kid as a, on a holiday and um, I went and, and went for a meal with a Chinese family and I offered to pay um, my, my portion of the meal, right? Because it was a big group and I'm there as a guest and I was like, let me, you know, contribute. And they were horrifically offended. And I was, right. it was explained to me that in China, um, offering to pay at the end of a meal when you're a guest is actually um, a, a symbol of you saying, I don't think you can afford to pay right. for me. Yep. right and it's really offensive and for me that just signifies that that's the complete opposite in the western world where offering to pay is a gesture of like you know being mm -hmm. fair and it's a nice thing and the fact that this one act is interpreted in two complete opposite ways um on it just in two different societies and cultures for me it just shows how everything we think of as like the way you should behave what is right what is wrong you know and those morals and ethics and things like that and the way we live our lives um it's all done by ourselves right we determine what is right and wrong if you go back to um you know the earlier part of the 20th century homosexuality was seen as wrong it was seen as a mm -hmm. um, mental health disease you know there was racism slavery all of these sorts of things um because that's what conditionally as a society we agreed was right at the time and then we changed our thinking and so on um and i think that that's a whole like rabbit hole to go down of like mm. we condition ourselves 
in the way that we live our lives um right. and that evolves over time um whereas in scientology it's a bit different because it's it's conditioning and that this is the way to do things and all other ways are wrong whereas in just general society it evolves over time and views change as more information comes out and linking it back to that intelligence thing um you know and linking into different groups and finding purpose and belonging um you know, people are always striving for the same things and the right things and they want to be, they want to feel empowered and feel like they're doing the right thing and making a difference and all of this. Um, it just comes down to how you get that and the right way of doing it and what group you end up falling in. Yeah, exactly. I I agree. Um, and Richie would like you to tell him you're ruined. <laughs> you know, Dog's I, my ruin. <laughs> take well, that you... back All right. <laughs> <laughs> well you know uh i think uh alex you and i were talking about that in one of the past streams uh, you know what was it 10 15 years ago if you were transgender it was considered a deviance by the psychiatric or psych the psychological community so i mean the the big thing that we need to remember is is that as long as we keep educating ourselves, keep exploring, keep learning, which is should be the purpose of science to begin with, is that we are constantly pushing the boundaries, learning new things, and going back over what were past precedents, and seeing if there is something wrong with it, or if there's something different, or there's a new truth that comes out. You know, I mean, think about how many things, as you were saying, being homosexual, just how many years ago was not only considered a mental illness, but was a crime. Um, what, what was the game where the movie that uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was in, where he, the character he played invented the first computer and was found out that he was gay and he ended up taking the chemical castration and what it did to him. And we think about what, what happened to the those folks who were like that back then and how they were devastated, how many of them took their own lives. So I think that we need to, you know, be very mindful of things like that and how it's hurt people. And also challenge yourself, right? And this is something that I try and do is try and challenge your own. And it's something you can't do in coercive groups like Scientology, right? You, you try and challenge your own beliefs and thinking with everything, right? Because when you start thinking about this, you realize how deep it goes. Why do I think that this thing is right or wrong? You know, why is it that I wait? If you wake up in the morning and go to work Monday to Friday, nine to five to earn money, nothing wrong with that. That's the way it's done. But challenge your thinking of it and challenge yourself and think, well, why do I think that's the right way to do it? Is there a way I can earn money where I don't? do that you know is that working for my life my schedule am i seeing my family this is not coercive control here it's just challenging yourself and your own thinking on what you're doing and why you think that that's the right thing to do and it's totally okay to say yeah look for me nine to five works really well and i get my money it's all fine but for some people that doesn't work going freelance might make a, a difference for example right. but if you don't challenge yourself to question these core principles and beliefs then you'll never make that decision and i'm a big um, champion of people um, questioning yourself and thinking critically and and like investigating is this working for me what do I really believe do I believe this because that's the way I was, way I was raised and the way I was taught or do I believe it because I genuinely believe it and that's something that linking about Scientology coming out of Scientology has helped me do because I'm now questioning everything because um, A, you can't do that in Scientology and B, it just goes down to these real fundamental principles of why am I here? What am I doing? What's my purpose in life? Um, it and nice it's a really... It's, it's great. And, you know, as much as there's a lot, the more questions I ask, the more questions are created that right. don't necessarily have the answers. But I enjoy that process and it makes me think you know, it opens up my mind to stuff. Whereas if I just kind of lived my life with my head down and didn't really think too much, mm -hmm. um, you know, then you just end up in a little bit of a silo. Right. Exactly. Um, let's see here. Jen writes, and I thought this was really interesting with Aaron, Mike and Amy's recent vids. I've learned how Scientology is an MLM that publics can get paid based on courses taken by people they recruit. And yeah, I mean, 
when I started realizing that if you get someone to buy a course, you're getting X amount of percentages back off of what they're paying into it. And that's an MLM as far as I know. Yeah, this is this is what's called a field staff member in Scientology. And as much as it's not a core principle or practice of like how Scientology succeed, it is something that is, you know, promoted. And as a bookseller, you know, director of public book sales, I would encourage public to come and help me sell books every week and one of the incentives is you know every book you sell you get a percentage and if that person comes and does a course you get 10 percent of all of that and you know it's a little thing of saying look it's not just you don't just do it for the benefit of spreading scientology you can financially win from it and there are people in the world particularly in the us who are called power fsms who have made a living off it right if you recruit somebody and work really hard to get them in and get them on and they go out to ot5 ot8 whatever um you can earn really decent money from it and it's not a common thing but there are a number of people who have made a real living off it um but it doesn't come from a place of i'm doing this because i want to earn money you're doing it because you want to help save the planet and if i can earn money from it great right um right. it's an added benefit um but yeah there are people who do financially really reward from introducing people to scientology Chad, how much have you made on <laughs> Well, I was advised not to say because I I probably have too many people tracking me down, but it's quite a bit. <laughs> have you they signed don't pay OSA. NDA? They don't pay OSA <laughs> shit. Don't you get slave wages? <laughs> Working for the Sea no, Org? but we got to remember. Chad right? has unlimited financial resources. As everyone <laughs> I knows. don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Downtone Abbey, which, by the way, Downtown another Abbey. television Fantastic. series I got completely hooked on with my wife. Change is uncomfortable. Being different is uncomfortable. People are so afraid of being othered that they attack anything they perceive might be a threat to the status quo. Poe agreed. Um, I've always loved being considered a weirdo, and I've always loved being considered uh, outside of the norm. I've I I wear it with pride. So, but yeah, I, I know far too many people are, you know, especially when I was growing up, everybody had to have the Jordache jeans. They had to have this. They had yeah, to have it's still today. God. I I don't give a crap about that. I'm about the most unfashionably conscious person that there is. Same here. You know. You see me outside of this, it's sweatpants and t-shirts that are 20 years old. I don't care about fashion. I uh, I find that really funny because I underdress massively for these streams because this is just what I'm wearing. Like, <laughs> But normally he's home. got his makeup on and he's dancing and flashing around his house in his expensive tuxedos. I, and I normally wear hair. a three-piece suit. Like That is my my normal attire. It was awesome. You're Last joking, right, Alex? On video are you chat? Okay. In your, in your <laughs> oh, business. I was going to mess with him there. Uh, wow i was gonna okay. say last time we were on video chat i was like that is a bomb vest you got but now i know you actually wear a three-piece wait a minute what kind of hat do you have um so i don't normally wear a hat i'm gonna start wearing a hat now i'm losing my hair i do have a cowboy hat you can't see it but i went to america in oh. september and spent a decent amount of money i never wear it but um, i'm gonna have to get him with an alligator skin hat when he comes That's to florida <laughs> i never wear it That's but um funny. but no that was a little treat to myself but no i don't normally wear a hat but i do wear a three-piece suit you got to remember also i used to work in in fashion so i have a really mm -hmm. nice three-piece oh. suit and people think suits are uncomfortable and horrible and all of this and one thing so. that i learned working in the fashion industry was actually if you get a suit tailored to you um yeah. it's it is actually really comfortable the problem people you. have with suits is that they don't fit and one advice i'd have for my fashion background is um it's better to buy a cheap suit and then spend money having it tailored to you than buying a really expensive suit that doesn't fit right and actually if you have a tailored suit that fits you properly um it it, it is comfortable um it's just about the fit. yeah and, the and don't get me wrong i don't always dress like a slob i'm just i like a nice suit too and yeah what you say if yeah. you get it tailored just right it feels really comfortable mm. and it looks good i could i think you would look I... badass in a suit dude i remember you throwing one of those pictures up where you're in a suit and it, it completely changes people's perceptions but the jordash yeah. shit yeah and being into the latest trend i gotta have the latest <laughs> iphone all that i'm always the oh, last yeah. one on, on board i no, wouldn't I'll even be... have gotten I mean, the Facebook and remember the MySpace stuff. I'm like, I see where oh, this is yeah. going. I'm like, I want to have oh, nothing God. to do with this. I'm not putting my data out there. But, um, you know, you have to eventually go along with it because the group, the herd goes with it. And then in order to fit in society, you can't keep your moral code anymore. You have to go with it. 
Well, that's I, would, I wouldn't have anything cost. to do with any of this shit, to be honest with you. That's why cell phones cost two and three thousand dollars yeah. because they can they can charge it. Yeah. Um, let's see, unfriendly atheist being like everyone else sucks. I agree. Um, let's see, geekdom. Everyone has different experiences with COS, but they're all nefarious. Oh, what's gentlemen? Nefarious? You want to chime in on that one? All experiences are nefarious. Everyone has different experiences with COS, but they're all nefarious. Oh, yeah. All their experiences are nefarious. It depends. Some people get out of Scientology and they become what's called indie Scientologists, where they still believe in the tech and they don't realize they were traumatized. They don't know what they don't know yet. So that's that's my answer. Alex? I think also uh, the majority of um, majority of Scientologists go in they do their courses, they benefit or don't benefit and leave or don't leave. And they're not really subject to all of these like seal working hours and all of this. And, you know, not every Scientology has had a um, in a person experience of abuse and violence and all of this. Like the majority of Scientologists just go in, do their courses. And that's that. Um, but that doesn't mean that they are not victims of some sort of um, manipulation, coercive control, and it's affecting them in a way that they won't um, realize perhaps until they leave. Um, so you have to understand that um, a lot of what goes on with the church and the impact it has on people's minds is something that people aren't even aware of. And even if they haven't seen like, you know, personal stories of disconnection or abuse or whatever, that doesn't mean they are not being manipulated in their minds. What do they call the people who are selling this stuff at the different like at flag and places like that where they actually track you down and they have a list of people you have to talk to before you can do anything. Um, so that's, are you talking about the, like a routing form? They get, they have a form, but there are people that they have to see and the people that they're going to see are all trying to sell them all different courses or resell courses. A reg? Like that. Yeah. The reg. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so a registrar, a reg is the person that's selling you courses or books or whatever, um, and there'll be a, a book reg or a you know recruitment reg cycle. Um, but that's a, basically a reg is a salesperson in Scientology. Let's see. Uh, here's a good one for uh, for all the three of you. How much do you think the internet has completely ruined Scientology's ability to recruit? I think we should have Clearwater Chad's opinion on that, seeing as he's the the real yeah. puppet master here. Oh, I mean. The you got to understand something, okay? Um, the internet has helped because the numbers have gone up, up, up. So, I mean, church is expanding and there's always going to be haters. Nice. <laughs> always to the point and concise. Doug, what do you think? How much the internet? Yeah, that's their Achilles heel because L. Ron Hubbard didn't anticipate it and it's definitely caused their numbers to go down. Alex? Yeah. yeah, no, it's true. I think L. Ron Hubbard policies are not written with the internet in mind. Um, so I agree. It's their Achilles heel. Um, it is it, it's not helping them in any way. And there are ways around it. They could evolve and grow. And if you look at like Scientology in the 70s, 80s, 90s, they did invest a lot of money in new technologies, the whole income system, right? The, the whole telex system. L. Ron Hubbard was really keen on using the latest technologies to Scientology's they, advantage. Those they were cutting the edge when, when Scientology got them, weren't yeah. they? The yeah. telex thing was like a very new system. They were like one of the first major huge organizations worldwide to implement a telex system when they started moving over with the internet and they made the telex system digital and the central files and all of this. Like they spent millions of dollars making this program that at the time was really cutting edge. Um, they always have been at the forefront of using these technologies to their advantage. Um, and they just have kind of stopped doing that now. And they're not helping themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think that that's, that's one thing I see with the, the problems that they're having is, is that when he passed away, they, they lost his ability to have the rewrites and things like that that could bring him into the modern area with te era with tech. So I, I, I agree with that. Let's see. The Imitation Game, that was the movie that uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was in. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Getting down through some more of these. Yeah, a lot of people agreeing. Yeah, we're all we're all different, and we all have our own way. I I I particularly enjoy being different. So, 
I just want to make one correction. Poe said that LRH passed away, which he's actually just doing research, and he'll be back shortly. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgot. Great point. I, Target 2, yeah, right? Wasn't he supposed to be back years ago, though? I think he had a 26 year Well, he's, having, he's doing extra research, so he'll be back short enough. You know what he told us about that, Poe, in the cult? That he mm-hmm. we weren't going to just bring Scientology to this planet, just to give you the size of the game that we were playing in Scientology is that we were going to spread it all over the universe. This is just the first one that was lucky enough, like of all the mass matter and energy that we see and don't see. In other words, the multiverse, the cultiverse, we were going to spread. This is the very first place, Earth of all places. This place was lucky enough to have Scientology. And when we're done here, this is where you get the billion year contract. We're going to go literally, this is just the beginning. We have a project forever to get Scientology on all these other planets and stuff and different dimensions god how the fuck without some of these techniques we're talking about could anybody (laughs) believe this at all it's just just shows you the power of of these techniques because that's that's ludicrous that's part of it right if you and that's what we're talking about the difference between cults and religions right In in a cult or coercive group they promise the world right they they have a goal that's unobtainable so always working towards it and you're never going to get there whereas mm-hmm. if you look at christianity there's no goal to like can you know some denominations yes to convert everyone to christianity but the whole idea is just live a better life using christianity no they want can. they i believe that I'm anybody spread- in a religion believes what they believe so they they may say that alex but christians you know would like people to be saved by jesus yeah, they believe they, that's the way they would yeah. like that yes and there are some denominations that take that more literally um mm-hmm. but there's no goal of like if everyone was christian on planet earth mm-hmm. they don't suddenly move on to the next planet you know the goal right, of, right. in scientology Smaller. is much more extreme whereas <laughs> it's in christianity it's much more like you know just do the best you can in your life right there's no like if you don't do, you know, if Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff, there are denominations that are a lot more extreme, but mm-hmm. it's about those, it's one of those techniques anyway, sorry. Don't and also house. another You're thing right. you just triggered off real quick, Alex, I was talking about this with Marcus the other day, I think, or maybe it was you where he gives us in Scientology, the biggest game you could ever give somebody. We're immortal yeah. beings, like not in the LDS church, right? We get another planet when we leave, but we create universes. We are gods. I want to was a God maker. And he's making God. So you can't be any more powerful than a God who creates universes. And he said that before this whole thing started, everything we see, we as Thetans were the people that put out our anchor points and started this entire thing. And we forgot by getting trapped in these games, our memory's gone, that we actually created all this. So there is no God in Scientology. We're it. And we remember that. We not only get a galaxy or whatever, we can create our own universe, each of us. It's just the biggest, headiest, most narcissistic and, and, and powerful goal that you could give somebody if you can get them to buy into that. And we're also immortal beings who have all the time in the world to do this. So it's, it's just like, like I said, minus the mind control, I don't think any of this shit would work because it sounds retarded as it's coming out of my mouth. But when I believed in that, you couldn't give somebody more of a, a conviction. And this is where we get the greatest, the greater good. Anything goes in Scientology because look at what we're dealing with, you know? So and, wild. Uh, thank you, Denver Stevo. For those of you that don't know, Denver Stevo is bringing his own channel to yes. SPTV. And we're waiting. Uh, he said so, five weeks, right? Yes, five weeks. Yes. So get ready Looking for forward that. To it. Um, and I forget who asked it, but someone asked, um, when Miscavige passes, who is going to take over, do you think? Tom Cruise? Ha! No, no I, I'm serious. What, no, I think that's a real possibility. Really? Absolutely. Why do you because, that? because they're the two more in Tom's head and David's head. They're the two most powerful beings. They're, the world is up to them. They're the most powerful Scientologists. Scientology is the most powerful religion and the only chance for mankind with Tom Cruise's abilities, um, his psychopathy. I think if David drops the body, he would absolutely be in line to actually take over the church. Or in other words, he would run it, I believe, and then he would get other people to do it while he's doing his movies and shit. But he would, I think he there's a decent chance of him actually being the leader of Scientology. I, I can as see crazy where as that sounds. I can see where you're coming from. I see a world where he would feel like he has to do something about it and he might help 
you know, find Another a leader person. or whatever. But I don't think his. But like, who better uh, than Tom Cruise? Who else well, is he going to get, though? Yeah, you know? but I, I think that there'll be people in his inner circle. You know, that one day would have been Marty Rathbun or Mike Rinder, right? And but I who think would they, who would that be now, though? Is all I'm asking. Well, that's like, what who, I mean. I, I don't know, but there, I, there is I nobody think, but him. I think that if Dave Miscavige was to drop his body there would be a power struggle and it would be interesting to see what happens and Hell i feel yeah. like tom cruise probably will step in and be like guys sort your shit out and and help fight that process but i think ultimately the church have the power over him so the church whoever it might be would kind of say well no look, you're not a sealed member you're not um you know dedicating your life to scientology in the same oh, way like and that. you're not um you know, you are not chosen to be the one or whatever. I think he'd have a hand in it and he'd be important, absolutely, and he would get behind whoever it is that he chooses. Um, but I think it would be probably someone who has kind of stayed fairly quiet in the background, hasn't done anything too offensive, but is high up. You know, someone like Claire Headley would have been back in the day. She wasn't a PR spokesperson or anything, but someone that knows Scientology tech inside out and is in RTC, was in Dave Miscavige's inner circle. I think it's more likely that someone like that would end up taking the, the helm. Someone that hasn't, you know, that just knows Scientology inside and out and just wants to get their head down and do it, whether that's an interim leader or not. Um, but it would be interesting to see. Who knows? Yeah, you know, I've, I've heard from I've heard Mike and Aaron and Mark and those guys pretty much they if it's not Tom, it's going to be someone who is is in basically the hole right now. That's a upper level person that will just step up and take that position. Well, we're at two hours and five minutes right now. Wow. But before we go, one last question, I think. um Alex and Doug would be great to start off on answering this. And then we let uh, Clearwater Chad there finish it off as our OSA representative. Do most Scientologists live by the, this life isn't all that important mantra when you were in, did you believe that? Doug, do you want to get yes, first? Yes, definitely. In fact, um, yes, it desensitized me to my emotions and feeling things. And since we live multiple lives, I, it completely fucked me up this, this particular thing right here. And I think most Scientologists that have been in for a long time. Um, yeah, they just become sociopaths and their feelings shut down and nothing actually is important because it's just another lifetime. That's the way my parents treated me. Um, you know, I'm, Sorry, didn't work out this lifetime, son, uh, but we'll catch you on the flip side. It's really uh, like that in Scientology families, you know. I, I agree. I think I think there's two strands to this and it depends what you're doing at the time. There is an element of when things don't go right, when you have to disconnect. Well, it's just one lifetime. Doesn't matter when you're suffering, when you're you're not having a good time. You look at it as a uh, well, you know, it's just one life I've got. It doesn't matter. But on the flip side, at the same time, it's sometimes the complete opposite. Right. We have to get this done now. We have to clear the planet this lifetime because this is our chance and this is our shot. Don't mess it up. So at the same time as you're telling yourself, oh, it's just one lifetime, it doesn't matter. You're also telling yourself that this is the lifetime it has to be done, uh, which is the complete opposite. So this lifetime actually is more important than ever you've that any you've ever had because you've come across Scientology now and now you need to do it. Like it, it's two opposite opinions, but you believe them both. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're if they're recruiting you to sign your seal contract, it's like, well, this is the lifetime that you are going to achieve your spiritual freedom. So this is the important time. Um, whereas, as you say, if you're not having a great time, ah, it doesn't matter. Emotions aren't important. This lifetime doesn't matter because you've got others. Can I just say one thing here real quick that I just wanted to address because it's a good point. Lorna, I'm not trying to not see the end of Scientology. I want that more than anything, but I've been watching this thing survive everything, including Operation Snow White. So just because David Miscavige leaves, of course I want to see it go away. But I also don't get all super happy that that's going to happen tomorrow. She says, I suggest you begin to see the end of Scientology. Why do you speak of it continuing forever? It's not me that's speaking of that. That's their track record. So I'm, I'm just trying to be honest about the size of the monster that we're dealing with. I'm not trying to be pessimistic. Let's I've just see. seen people get excited over and over 
because they come new into the field. I don't. I, you, I think you're an ex Scientologist, right, Lorna? So forgive me if you have if you've been around forever. But man, I've just been. You know, we've seen this thing survive anything. So I don't think it's going to go away very soon. And I do think when David Miscavige dies, there'll just be another leader. And I personally think it would be Tom Cruise would be a good candidate for that. These are total speculation, but I did live the fucking thing. And like I said, I've watched everybody get excited because Aaron or someone will put out a video that says the end of Scientology tomorrow. I don't think that's the case, even though I wish deep down it would fucking be that way. Of course I do. I wouldn't bother doing this shit. I'm just trying to speak from like what I believe is actually true and not just like, you know, saying it, it to be popular or whatever. We also have to confront the facts here, right? Even if mm -hmm. it is the end of the Church of Scientology, um, there are still people who are going to believe in it, right? Exactly. Ending and they closing have to be down the church doesn't stop Great people point. believing and following in it. So mm -hmm. even if the church itself as an entity is taken down, there's still the belief systems. The books are still there. They will That's always be there. And there will always be people who following, follow it and apply it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um mm -hmm. You know, you can believe in whatever you want. And there's that aspect to it. And there's also the aspect that, say, for example, in a future 100 years from now, Scientology has died a death. Everyone's moved on and the books mm -hmm. are still there, but like no mm -hmm. one practices it or whatever. I could see Scientology that. Scientology have spent millions of dollars preserving LRH tech and making these underground bunkers and vaults where they have inscripted LRH scripture onto <laughs> yep. gold plates in titanium boxes that are filled with argon gas or whatever way around it is that the thing happens. <laughs> and stored them in nuclear proof bunkers because they want to preserve the tech for yes. um, forever and i was talking to uh, someone about this the other day how funny the idea is that 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 they are really well preserved and actually um if the church was to close down or shut down or whatever there's to destroy those things is going to be a lot of money and a lot of effort so in actual fact right even if the church is closed oh, down is declared crazy. bankrupt the government or whoever are not going to spend millions of dollars retrieving all of those things and destroying them they're just going to be left there and forgotten That's about so let's funny. confront it there is a right. very real possibility that even after the extinction extinction of the human race LRH tech will still be here preserved somewhere. What you're saying is true. And isn't that pathetic and sad that there really was a purpose for putting his ridiculous stuff underground. And what you said is probably the case. That's just terrible because no one's going, even after the end of the church, gonna it's go going to cost a up. lot of money to go in and destroy these bunkers and stuff. And no one's going to do it. Why That's would a true. company step in and spend a buttload of money destroying something when they're not going to earn anything from it or gain anything from it? Just on so principle, they real... should do it, Alex. I mean, yeah, God I damn it. Let's write this. Let's actually blow it up. How many millions does it cost? I'll write the fucking check. I yeah. agree in principle. Should, something should be done about it. But ultimately, let's oh, face the right. facts. Right? Right, Nothing dude. will be done about it. And, and that is a very That's real possibility that there That's will crazy. be Scientology tech preserved that will last longer than the human race. I which forgot is a scary about thought. that. That is, dude. Yeah. I forgot about those bunkers. That's that's hilarious Jack, and terrifying. Before you uh, give us your answer, Ava, thank oh, you yeah. very much for the super sticker. Thank you, Ava. So, oh, yeah. Chad. What does Chad think? What is Osa? Yeah. How does Osa? How would you retort to that strong statement by Alex? It's a lot to think about. You know, indeed. I think. I think I'll have to I'll have to think about that. But in the in the interim, everything everyone should be obeying Clearwater Chad and listening to everything he says. Until can we, we get can a reason for that? Usually, when you say something like that, you have to supply a motivation so people will want to do that. Because it's just... the right thing to do. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's, that's good enough. <laughs> Spoken like a All true right. Scientologist. <laughs> well, folks, thank you very much for joining us for these past two hours. Uh, I've had a great time. I, I Thanks think for that I expand time. my my consciousness, my the way I think about things. I hope you have as well. I've loved seeing everyone in the chat, the great communication we have going on there. Um, yeah. Remember, if you aren't already, go ahead and hit uh, the other channels and make sure you subscribe because there's so much you're going to miss out on if you're not going over and seeing what everybody else is putting out. Um, again, thank you so much. If you are a member of Scientology or of an organization that would be a cult, there is help out there for you. There are people who care about you and want to see you exit this. Um, again, I love the community that we have. Everyone is just amazing. We're going to go ahead and check on out, uh, guys, if you remain in the, uh, the stream there, we'll, uh, talk over some business after we're done there. Sure. But, Thank Thanks you very everyone. much. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Pope, for setting this up. Oh, there it is.
That's <laughs> fucking awesome. I can kind of see the bobblehead. You let me yeah. know. You let me know, That's Doug. I'll send good. you whatever you want for no charge. Okay. Boy, that it looks a, a lot ginger. less scarier than the program that Alex was talking about. That's earlier. a ginger. I really like so that. wouldn't that be an Alex bobblehead? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -oh. I got, I got uh -oh. palm we trees. If you like the palm trees better, <laughs> That's make whatever you want. Thank you. Maybe you could all donate right, to folks. the person who asked you to draw that. Just a thought. Yeah. Well, thank you all very much for joining us. And as always, make it count. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh.